Good morning, everybody. Happy to see you on this Wednesday morning. I'm excited to start today because we left off in a very interesting part of the story. We had the big infiltration, what I think going to be the final inf infiltration of the Ryujin questline, the infiltration of Infinity Limited. On Planet Jemison in New Atlantis, it's going to be quite a stealth mission. We have parked our companion on the roof. We're leaving her there for now. We're going to go inside and explore around and see if we can get this mission done. It's going to be complicated. We've got a lot of stuff to do. We're going to arrive on the roof. We have to go down to maintenance, and then we've got to, like, um, um, sabotage some sort of pipe coolant system, which is going to cause a building-wide alarm and get all of the civilians out. Then we need to go to the executive wing and read a terminal. Then we need to go all the way down to R&D without getting seen so that we can read a terminal and then get some, uh, plant some information. It's going to be quite a stealth mission. Thankfully, I've got a brand new stealth suit. That's right. Starfield has its own version of the Chinese stealth armor from Fallout, the Fallout universe. I'm excited about that. And it looks good, too. It's a super stealthy suit. Makes my character look a little bit more sleek, you know. Instead of running around in his boxers, belly flopping everywhere, he's, he's you know, he's looking a bit more sleek, which is great. It's good to see everyone today. Anonymous, Crossmar, Tony J, John Washburn, Cat5, Slatty Bartfast, Lane Barry, Heather R, Mike Manigold, James Bell, Ant444, Base God Purge, That Guy in the Kilt Detailing, Mr. Virus, Wade Speakerman, Jeff Zuniga, Slatty Bartfast, and it's Rachel in the chat today with the first super chat who says, Ox, you were squeamish about neuroamps, but in uh, Baldur's Gate 3, you were popping brain worms for powers. No problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, to be fair, in Baldur's Gate, I was a bit squeamish. I mean, remember the entire eye surgery situation with that bard guy he kind of just took a knife to the eye and we lost an eye yeah i was i was that was not pleasant i was not happy there uh and the entire mind slug through the eye thing is just absolutely disgusting but once that's done and you have a mind slug in your brain all it is is a user interface right you don't actually have to watch the cut open or mind slug being Little dots on it, and you can click on one to unlock a new power. Plug slithering down into the hole, but it's minor. It's minor. White Fang says, how are you doing? I am doing very well, White Fang. It's... It's good to see you. Chad is saying that my mic is cutting in and out. Um... Hmm. I'm jostling it, and it seems to be holding pretty well. But I'll do my best to try and make sure that doesn't, uh, doesn't happen. Like, I'm tapping it right now, and it's fine. Yeah. All right. White Fang. Now Chad is saying no sound. I've I've got sound. Like I'm looking at my monitor right now and it's perfect.
Yeah, um, okay, now chat is saying they can hear it. Right, well, I'll, I'll continue to monitor it, but every time I look over on my monitor, it's working. So, either it's messing with me, and it's turning off when I'm not looking, but then turning on when I am looking, or, um, or it's some other issue. Don't touch the mic much. I'm trying, but I gotta kinda adjust it every now and then. I really need to work on my setup here. I need to take, what I need is I need like a month. <laughs> I need a month to just do all the things, all the things that I can't do because I'm working and I'm streaming or I'm doing a lore video or, you know, I'm raising the kids and, you know, putting them to bed and dinners and all like, I need a month where I can just focus on cleaning my computer and upgrading a few cards and stuff and organizing this rat's nest of wires over on my table or getting a new preamp so that it isn't seven years old and it continues to work, or getting a new pop filter that isn't completely covered in burn marks. And like, I just need a month to take care of all this stuff. But I, I, can't, I can't have a month. <laughs> I'm not gonna get a month. Retro Wave says, just don't touch the mic. I hear you now. Yeah, I guess I will. I, I, I probably need a new mic. Or a new cord. Or a new preamp. It's probably the preamp. Really, I probably shouldn't even be using a preamp. I should probably have a more sophisticated way of doing this. Anyway, it works. Let's dive in. Sergio says, a month? Is it enough? Yeah, yeah, a month to go through all my mail and respond to things that I've been neglecting for a couple of months. You know, a month to organize my office and get it cleaned up so that I can finally do that big office reveal video that I've been talking about doing for four years now. A month to organize all the files on my computer so that they're actually organized in logical, understandable folders, and I've got a good hierarchy for all of my files, and then I can go back into Adobe Premiere and then connect all of the pre-compositions to the source footage so that it makes sense, instead of just having to remember which hard drive I happen to have, that one eternal asset that I use in the, the, the little uh, gambling thing at the end, because I don't want to lose that sound effect, but which one is it? Is it, is it drive F, and then is it in the documents folder, or the downloads folder? Or is it drive G? You know, I just need to do all of this stuff so that I'm not constantly driving myself crazy. <laughs> and I need a month to do it. <sighs> all right. Anyway, let's dive in and continue where we were. Wade Speakerman says, uh, I still want that pop filter as a trusted piece of Ox memorabilia. No, 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 no. I, as soon as I began to think about the whole DNA aspect of things, I realized that this will always have to stay in my possession. I can never sell it. I can never donate it to charity. It's got beard hairs and little dried blobs of spittle in there, I'm sure. I mean, I bet you if you squeeze this over a sink or something, like just a bunch of tar and smoke and all sorts of goodness would just mm, ooze right up. Um, but really it's the, it's the beard hair follicles I'm concerned about because I don't want people cloning me. I realize that it's 2023 and we don't really have, you know, advanced human cloning yet, but it could happen. And I don't want this to get put in some museum because, you know, I know the Smithsonian, they're constantly bugging me. They want to put this in a museum in the Oxhorn wing of the Smithsonian. I get their emails all the time. I wish they'd leave me alone. But I don't want some scientist to steal this from the Smithsonian one day and say, I know what we need. We need an army of ox horns and I'm going to clone him and I'm going to use his beard hairs to get his DNA. So I'm thinking ahead. I'm thinking ahead and this is going to have to stay in my possession forever. Matt Rowland says, Ox, if you organize it all, you'll forget where it all is. Remember, a clean desk is the sign of a sick mind. Love you, Ox. Well, if that's the case, then I have a very, very healthy mind. Man, my mind is healthy. I mean, just look at this place. Mm. You can look at this room and just say, wow, that ox, he's got a healthy mind. <laughs> I'm so glad it's a sign of a healthy mind and not a sick one. Still, I need a, I need a month. Mark Fogarty says, you have your own wing? Yeah. Yeah, where do you think they keep all of the hats? 
and beard care products and suspenders. I mean, Mr. Rogers has a bunch of sweaters. I'm going to have a bunch of suspenders and hats and stuff and cigar boxes. It's going to take an entire wing, not to mention the fallout props. When I die, where do you think all of this is going? To my kids? No. To a museum? Yes. It needs to be maintained for posterity. It needs to be given out, given off to the public. Something that people can look at and go, hmm, now that was a life well spent. All right? Yeah. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, coffee, coffee, coffee. Laura says the ox thong. Is it at the Smithsonian? I mean, yeah, but we don't talk about that. It's in a hidden section of the Smithsonian. Um, Basically, if you if you need to ask where it's being held, then you don't need to know where it's being held. But it's there. It's there. All right, you stay in put. You stay put, Andresia. I don't want you messing me up. Oh, yeah, I'm going to run in there with this thing. <laughs> Probably not. I need to switch to a stealth weapon. Man, I didn't bring a stealth weapon, did I? Crap, I left it all aboard the ship. Oh well, I can do this without a weapon. But I need I do need to take a uh, take off all my armor. I might need that. How heavy is that? 8 pounds. All right, I'm going to take it off for now unless I absolutely need it. Oh, and I've got my new special ability, right? Wade Speakerman says, ah, but if I air someone, but if I or someone clones you, you will live forever. No, no, no. That's not how cloning works. I won't live forever. My clone would live forever. It would be like if I had an identical twin. Identical twins aren't the same person. They're two completely different people in identical bodies. I don't want a bunch of people out there that are identical to me. No. No. I want to be the only me, right? So I won't be living forever if you clone me. Just another person in essentially my body will be running around, and that's not cool. I don't like that. No, science is going too far these days. Trust me. Mark my words. Sabotage the heating system. Is this an elevator in a ventilation shaft? We sabotaged the heating system. We got discovered briefly. So do I want to reload and do that again? I do. I do. I mean, we did it. We did it. But uh, I want to see if I can do that again without being discovered. Wade Speakerman says, no, you take your brain out and put it in the clone. Duh. 
Crosmar says, oh, I see. Yes, I actually wrote a short story about that when I was young. Crosmar says, best way to do this is the front door, as you can access the roof access from there as well, but also have access to more lore from staff checking in and a floor and more. Oh, Crosmar. Well, I mean, I gotta do it for the lore. We gotta have the lore. I suppose it makes sense to go in through the front door and walk around and talk to people, because we can always come back. We can always come back up to the roof and go from here, um, but at the same time, get the dialogue from the receptionist and everyone downstairs. So let's go do that really quickly. Then we'll get back to our stealth mission. <laughs> There's no light on this helmet. Cat5 says also Ox kind of sucks at stealth. Lol. Cat5, what broadcast have you been watching? Hello, I've been doing this entire Ryujin questline and I have been great. I have been great at stealth. I am not afraid to say. The last stealth mission I was discovered only once. Only once. All the previous ones went off without a hitch. Who's Who sucks at stealth? Not me. This game has proven I am adequate. I am adequate at stealth. Thank you. Infinity You'll Limited. You'll need to contact someone directly if you need to schedule an appointment. Hello. Did you have an appointment with us today? Can I get access to the marketing floor? I'm sorry, but we only allow visitors to specific floors based on appointment only. Did you have one scheduled today? Yes, my name is Skylar Lumen. I have an appointment with marketing. Ah, yes, from Lumen Interactive. The elevator here will take you to the marketing floor. Once you arrive, you'll want to talk to Ellis Ortiz. He's the receptionist there and will be happy to help you. Alice Ortiz, okay. Thank you very much. Let's go check it out. Uh, Man of Warb says, someone should create a character who looks like Destro from G.I. Joe. Oh my God, this is my childhood coming back. Destro? That was the guy with the big metal head, right? Oh, I remember G.I. Joe's. And romances uh, Andresia with the Serpent's Embrace trait. She does look like a young Baroness. Wow. I mean, now that you've said it, yeah. That's going to be a... I, I bet you they could come out with a companion mod to have Destro or something. All right. We've got roof access and marketing. Let's go to marketing. Hmm. Welcome to Infinity LTD's marketing department. That's you notify me that you are on your way. If you just have a seat, I can notify Miss Hart that you've arrived. <clears throat> Please, have a seat. Yeah, yeah, I totally will. Totes will. Totes will, son. Mind if I reach your computer? Yeah, you're gonna be fine with that. Appointments. Nina Hart, Skylar Lumen. It's a meeting with Nina, the very person whose presentation I ruined. Wow. Uh, we can edit this. Editing access denied. Please see Nina Hart for permissions. All right. Selmy Jackson, Val Courtier. Val Courtier, Executive Director, Synthetic Solutions. Confirmed, yes. Permissions marketing. Can't edit that. Stanley McMillan, uh, Ladarius Martin, CTO of Earthsoft. Confirmed, no. Permissions marketing and executive. So we need to talk to Nina if we want to change our level permissions. Memos, marketing meeting. Attention, marketing department. This is a reminder that we have our quarterly marketing review meeting coming up. Those who still need to provide information for the presentation have already been notified. If there are any questions or issues you'd like addressed during the meeting, please notify me as soon as possible. Nina Hart, Executive Director, Infinity Limited. Crosmar says, last tip, follow the receptionist. All right, thank you so much, Crosmar. All right, well, we need to wait for Nina Hart. Excuse me, 
Excuse me. You can't just... Warning, employees only. Did he just say, you can't just, oh, they don't pay me enough to care. Just looking around. All right, we've got marketing, dining hall, presentation theater, bathroom, and lounge. Oh, hello. Stanley McMillan. Hey, you look familiar. Sidonia, wasn't it? <laughs> ah, I'm glad they were able to program that in. This is the guy whom we met in his room. We could say, I think you're mistaking me for someone else, or I didn't think I'd run into you here, or I, or, uh, I hope you managed to close that deal with Deimos. Oh, that? Results still remain to be seen. They needed some time to think it over. I only hope when they're ready to talk, they'll come out here this time. I guess you must have an appointment if Desi let you up here. Well, don't let me keep you. I need to get back to work anyway. Okay, well, we got to see Stanley. Maybe next time we can get a drink. Yeah, that sounds great, Stanley. I mean, you're awful, and you work for an awful company. I hate you, but it's good to see you again. Ooh, is that a personal mini fridge? Wow. Crosmars, uh, I read Crosmars. Thank you, Crosmar. Halfway nuts says, what, no streaking today? I'm disappointed. Look at that. I got a fancy new stealth suit. Yeah, who needs to be streaking in a fancy new stealth suit? Not me. I don't have to be naked anymore. All right. All right, let's keep looking around here. I love the paintings. I hope I get access to all of these paintings when I do my settlement building so that I can make them in my settlement. And the coffee machine, oh man. Oh, I forgot to, no, I got a coffee. For a minute there, I saw the coffee machine and I was bummed that I didn't have coffee. But then I remembered I do have coffee. Yeah. Okay, one cubicle at a time. Methodical, determined, slow, purposeful. We shall get through. All right, we've got cred sticks, a safe, Novice locked, not really worth our time. All right, looks like we've got an elevator. No, there's a nice water hat. closet. Oh, thank you. You like my hat, huh? <laughs> I am totally not an infiltrator. I am not infiltrating your compound. Trust me, this is how I look every day. I'm glad you like the hat. A neon dancer outfit. I was looking for one of these. All right, I got the neon dancer outfit. Hey. Hey there. I'm just tiptoeing through the tulips over here. What have we here? Ah, presentation time. Is Nita Hart gonna come by? If the conditions here get any worse, I'm throwing in the towel on this job. This is why I hate meetings. They never what start I, what on time. What does it give for an office without working air conditioning? Is this meeting ever going to start? Psst. Don't trust the coffee in the break room. Corporate only stocks the cheap stuff. There must be, like... I don't earn enough to make dealing with the crappy conditions here any easier. There must be a required haircut. Oh, corporate barely shells out to keep the lights on in here. To work at this company? Like, look at that. We've got birds of a feather flock together. We've got two of the same old man in the exact same outfit. We've got three, three ladies with the exact same hairstyle. And exact same face? It's the exact same face too. I'm telling you, cloning is real and we need to be wary of it. 
Don't give your I'm microphone pop filters to anyone. Makes twice what I do. Well, we're learning that employees are not happy working here. No working air conditioning. People don't show up to meetings on time. Is that Nina? Yeah, it is. I think we're probably gonna meet with her later, so I'm gonna wait for her to come to us. You're great! Oh, I'm feeling the power of positivity. The power of positive thinking. Stressed? Management can help! Ooh! Is it just me or is that really creepy? Put your fingers in this warm bowl of water. Inhale the steam and I'll just get behind you and massage your shoulders. That's what they pay me for in management. No, 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 shh, 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 don't talk. Don't talk, enjoy the water. Here's a massage. Yeah, creepy as heck. No, thank you. I'm not working at infinity. Big old cafeteria. Progress is contagious. <laughs> no. What's this? You can do it. It's the same guy. It's the same old mustachioed guy. <laughs> he must be the CEO. I have climbed to the top of Mount Rainier and Mount Everest. I founded this company and I'm here for your personal massage. <laughs> <laughs> oh no what a unique weird icon for this company to have just uh this weird mustachioed guy hold on i just lost my chat there we go well i hope we see him on some of these propaganda posters later because he's awful and great, but greatly awful. Great expectations. All right, we got those books. What's that beeping? System error, critical compute error. All processes must be terminated immediately. Mem dump complete. And this is before I've sabotaged anything. Wow, this company is just spiraling down the drain. Have some time? Need spare credits? Then join our elite cuisine delivery squad. Ah, these poor people need a second job, but then again, who doesn't in 2023? All right, let's check out this side of the cafeteria. Ooh, hello, a little back room, a little back room perhaps. Oh yes, okay. We are finding all sorts of options. Right, and I think that may be it for the cafeteria. Let's finish our loop of the cubicles. All right, that's it. Now, let's wait for Nina Hart. One second. All right, sorry about that. Oh, 
I'll go notify Miss Hart that you are here. Feel free to use any of the facilities on the floor while you wait. The break room and bathrooms are just around the corner. Oh, thank you. Well, he's not going anywhere. Okay. Hello. Is he... is he glitched? I guess Nina doesn't actually come. Does she, does she come? If she doesn't come, then I'm going to go talk to her. I mean, we don't get in trouble for exploring this floor. Another day, another shift. Hello. Oh, were you my appointment? I'm, I'm so sorry. I somehow ended up triple booked today. <laughs> I'm just trying to get ready for this department meeting right now, but you can see Alice on your way out if you'd like to reschedule. Ooh, we can pass a manipulation check. We could say, I look forward to hearing from you. This is unacceptable. I thought I was dealing with professionals here. It sounds like you're having quite a day, or how did you end up triple booked? I wish I knew. Ellis claims he had nothing to do with it, and I haven't gotten a response back from Lucas to see if he was involved. For all I know, it's our stupid scheduling software acting up again. Well, we can pass a manipulation check. I want to meet with Lucas Drexler. Oh, well, I suppose I can work that out. Plus, I happen to know he's free right now. I'll set you up for executive floor permissions and notify Lucas that you're on your way. Hey, hey, hey. Besides, I'm pretty sure he's to blame for my current situation anyway. <laughs> Look at that. Good luck. Executive floor permissions. And we didn't even have to sneak through. Oh man, I'm gonna get permissions for every single floor. And then I'm gonna go to the roof and sneak down. <laughs> I'm gonna make my stealthing easy. All right. Well, let's go to the executive flo floor. I'm gonna do a quick save here. Executive offices. Is that a theme song or something? If so, I didn't recognize it. All right. Well, this is a big open area, so looks like we'll be, aha. Yeah, looks what? like we'll be sneaking across there at some point. I'm in big trouble if our next deal doesn't go through. Executive office is up there. Let's finish this floor. Wait, executive... Which one is... Wow, they've got that stress thing on every floor. They must have really stressed employees. Hi. The engineering department's missed four deadlines already this month. Okay, you're just an, a no-name executive. Don't mind me while I browse your office. In my full suit of stealth gear, which is totally not suspicious. 
Is that Drexler? Nope, that's an executive, another nameless executive. The budget for this year's looking pretty grim. Fan of ping pong. Tree plus tree equals tree. I've seen this several times and I still don't understand it. Brad Ludwig says press B. Oh, you mean back when I was uh, sitting? That would just advance the time. Maybe it would have worked to remove Alex, but I don't understand why they would use that function instead of just having him, him get up and walk away. But it's worth trying next time. What? Really? Wow, this is filthy. Infinity Limited just has their garbage piled up in a corner near the executive offices. That's crazy. What in the world? It must reek in here with all that garbage piled up over there. Yuck. And it's right near the kitchen where they all eat. Awful. Okay, well, there are only two executives on this floor. Let's go upstairs and see if we can find more executives to talk to. There's Drexler. Okay, yeah, let's go in. That's the terminal we need. Lucas Draxler. So you're the one Nina mentioned. I don't normally take last minute meetings, but she assured me it'd be worth my time, especially since it's just a quick introduction. Lucas Drexler, nice to meet you. Um. What potential client wouldn't be worth your time? You'd be surprised what slips through sometimes. But mostly it's small entrepreneurs who don't have anything innovative to offer the tech world. We could say you've got a lot of blood on your hands, Drexler. Look, we're playing the long game here. Drexler's gonna pay. When his name is outed in the media, when his company is destroyed, and when he's arrested by the UC. We could try and insult him now. We could show our hand. But that's going to work against our end goal. So we're going to uh, suck it up and we're going to be polite for now. And he'll pay the price later. Well, you've met me, so it's already been worth your time. <laughs> or nice to finally meet you. Or Skylar Lumen, Lumen Interactive. I heard you're interested in a partnership. I heard we have a mutual enemy, Ryujin Industries. A partnership would ha would give Infinity Limited the edge it really needs. Or I'm just seeing if it's a good fit for now. Or yes, I thought putting faces to names might help the process. Yeah, let's try that. You thought correct. I can certainly appreciate your motivation. Well, we still have to go through the proper channels, but having met you, let me see what I can do to speed things up. Okay. Is there anything else I can do for you? Well, yeah, I mean, what's our deal about? Oh, here we can say no. I look forward to our future meetings or just make sure Nina follows through next time. Or we can pass a manipulation check to say, let me install my presentation on your computer so the day is not a total loss. Well, now, that's an unusual offer. I suppose after having your initial meeting canceled, it'd be a shame for it to go to waste. Besides, if we're to be partners in the future... We might as well put faith in each other today, right? Laura says jaundice. Yeah, he is an unusually yellow guy. I'm thinking he might be a bit jaundiced. Well, well, well. We passed a manipulation check to get access to his computer. Fantastic. Overseer program. There we go. We run the we ran the program on Lucas's computer. Current user unknown and acting security override ex executing overseer program searching for files located files 37 processing file revisions files successfully revised 30 files purged 7 copying files to slate actions complete purging history purge complete workspace appointments marketing quarterly presentation optional host Nina Hart location marketing theater 
we've been there. Confirmed, no. Agenda, upcoming ad campaigns, new product lines, budget, review. Stefano Nofke says, remember the precognition power. Have fun. Thank you, Stefano Nofke. Colonel 87th says, Hi, Ox. Did you know that the distance between the Civil War and World War II to us in present day as is almost the same... Um, that would mean that the beginning of World War II, the Civil War, was what's still fresh as World War II is to us. I see. So you're saying the distance between World War II and our time is the same as the distance between the Civil War and World War II? Is it? Is it really? Why do I... Why do I feel like the Civil War was way before World War II? I don't know the dates off the top of my... I know World War II, 1942. <clears throat> I don't know the date of the Civil War, so... All right, I'll take your word for it. Confidential Project Progress. Host, Faye Sengzavan. Location, Faye Sengzavan's office. Confirmed, yes. Agenda status update. Deuteronomist says Civil War ended in 1865. World War... Two ended in 1945. Oh. Oh my god. Wow, yeah, you're right. That's trippy. It's trippy to think that. Interesting. Well, thank you very much, Colonel 87th. I wonder if people fighting during World War II thought about the Civil War as recently as we think World War II was to us. Because it does feel recent, doesn't it? I mean, it's way before any of us were, were alive, but still... I suppose that means there were some veterans of the Civil War alive during World War II. Confidential project reports. Oh, we read that. And then fiscal year projections. Host Julia Green. Location Lucas Drexler's office. Confirmed yes. Agenda. Current budget review. End of year projections. Proposed cuts to and, and, and reallocations. Messages. Faye Sengzvan. Upcoming meeting. Lucas, I haven't been able to reach our friends at the clinic. Can you please have someone lean on them? This delay is creating setbacks for the confidential project, and we both know we can't afford them. Faye Sengzavan, Chief Research Officer. Miriam Bernard says, Oh my God, you studied history, Ox. I studied classical history. I studied ancient Greece and ancient Roman history. I didn't study Civil War history or even World War II history. And that said, that said, I, I couldn't name a single date from ancient Greek or Roman time. Because I've never been good with dates. <laughs> never been good with dates. But listen, I'm a history major. That doesn't, doesn't mean I know all history. And that's the problem with, with being a history major. You tell someone you're a history major, they're like, Ah, oh, well then you must understand exactly what went on during the Silk Road and how the silkworms were... Um, smuggled from ancient China all the way to... What? No! I, I focused on a specific part of history. I don't know all human history. All right? <laughs> that's the thing. Colonel 87th says, that's what I was trying to say. I butchered it. That's right. I was able to interpret it. No worries, Colonel 87th. I am not doing a quiz now. Tony G is like, tell me what crossing the Rubicon is. Then it was when Caesar crossed the Rubicon River. I'm not getting into this. I'm not getting into this. I'm not going to do a quiz time. It's not quiz time with Oxhorn because Oxhorn got a degree in history 20 years ago in college. He therefore needs to answer all of my questions. No, we're not doing this. Stop it. Stop it. I'm playing a game. TJ Osana, Starfright Logistics. Hey, Lucas, I was talking to Brennan Hoffman at Starfright, or Starfright, and I think there's a good opportunity here for partnering. Want me to set up a lunch so we can go over the basics? TJ. Candace Lamond, unknown purchases. Lucas, there are some unaccounted for expenditures in the executive spending account that I'd like to go over with you prior to Green's budget review. Please contact me as soon as possible. Candace. Right. Nothing terribly incriminating. I mean, there is one piece of incriminating evidence on there, though they didn't name Project Dominion by name. It was nice However, meeting However, they did mention the clinic by name, which is probably going to come in handy.
All right. Well, here we go. It's interesting to see how we could have alternatively done this. All right, well, we've done everything we can through dialogue, I think. Something to report? So let's go to the roof. I mean, we now have roof access. Yep, that's all we got to do now. Let's go to roof access. Oh, it puts me right here. That's where the elevator goes. All right, I'm going to do a hard save here after we've uh, completed one third of our mission. <clears throat> I don't want to have to backtrack and go through all that lore again. A Varun Pain Blade. What is a Varun Pain Blade? Wow. Well, it's exactly what it says. It's a blade that causes pain. Cool. I should probably take a recon stem. Tell you what, I really need one of my superpowers here. Let's go to uh, Sense Star Stuff. It's just that one guard. Oh. Maintenance passcode. Uh, warning, system inspection is 279 days past due. <laughs> Yikes. Please see maintenance report. Immediate action is advised. Let's go to the maintenance report. The following systems are past due inspection and require immediate attention. Heating. For issues regarding this report, please see operations manager Seb Omanu. Critical systems. The following systems are considered to be in critical condition and require immediate attention. Heating. Warning. Past due, UC standard gas unit model, blah, 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 operating system, operating level, sit level, system offline, pressure level high, activate system. System activation is not recommended. Are you sure? Yes. Right. Gas leak detected. All non-essential personnel must evacuate the building. Please find the nearest exit and contact emergency services. Oh, 
Wow. Oh, wow. Look at that. I think we're on the executive level, right? So we shouldn't be... We have access to be here, so we should be able to walk through unscathed. Yeah, there's his office. All right, I'm having a hard time seeing anything. Uh, I gotta put my light on. I just don't want to miss a hatch in the air or something. Remember, you have no suit on, so that gas will damage you. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mark Fogarty. Alright, so this brings me back here. Colonel87 says, just thought it was interesting. It was an interesting thought. Thank you. And it spawned quiz time with Oxhorn, which I'm sure you didn't predict. <laughs> right, um, so to get down, well, let's keep going. Poor security. Well, we triggered the gas leak, but this has made things difficult for us because now we're walking through a big gas leak thing. No direct path seen. Do we have to get to the elevators? Is that what this is? Well, this would have been a lot easier had I not gone to the roof.
Uh, Wade Speakerman says, Oxhorn, did you know Cleopatra is closer to the invention of the iPhone than the building of the Great Pyramid is to Giza? I have heard that one before. Thank you, Wade Speakerman. Brad Ludwig says, you can use manipulate to cause guards to turn or move away. Yeah, you're right. I can. Not through walls. Kidding me? He comes in here. Doggone it. I thought he was going to keep walking past. Grendel says, Precognition would have shown you that. Yeah, all right. I guess I need to map them to my hop hot bar. Let's try... Sense star stuff. Let's put that on... Bracket. And then... Precognition. Let's put that on other bracket. working We're under hey, attack. Hey. it's not working when I put it on my hotbar it's not working so it, it didn't work when I put it on my hotbar which was weird um, so I guess I can only use one at a time Um, all right, these guys are, are moving all around a, lo a lot.
Why can't I do pre- but There, finally. Okay, so that caused him to come to me. Come on! It didn't last long. Alt Grendel says, Chat says hotbar just selects the power, then Z to activate. So I can't have more than one hotbar. What? That doesn't make any sense. There's no point to map it to the hotbar if it's already mapped to the button Z, right? Presumably, mapping it to the hotbar would allow me to have more than one power available on my keyboard. Because at the moment, the selected power is already mapped to the button Z. Having two of these powers mapped to, say, my favorite bar, like here, should make it so that I press that button to activate the power. But when I tried that, it didn't work. I could only activate one power. It was precognition. The problem is this guy looks right at me, so I need to send him packing, and then the other guy's gonna go around. But then he turns right around here. Come on, come on, come on, manipulation. I should really just bring him in here and close the door, shouldn't I? But then it could expire. He had his back turned! He had his back behind me! What the heck? Oh, come on. He had his back to me and I peek out for just a minute and suddenly he's got eyes on the back of his head. This is ridiculous.
Marketing, executive. I'm in executive now. I could go down to marketing. I need to get to R&D. So I need to figure out a way to get... It's either through executive offices or through marketing. I'm gonna find some sort of tunnel that brings me to general offices, which I could then find a tunnel to get to R&D. Matt of Warb says, it is tedious. They give you an equivalent of a biotic charge and Nova from Mass Effect, but to combo them, you have to press hotkey, then Z, then hotkey, then Z again. Ridiculous. Oh! So Z is the activate power button even if I have it bound to a different hotkey? Wow, why would they do that? You're right, that is tedious. Okay, well now that I know that, let's test it out. We can bind sense star stuff to that. Then we can bind precognition to that. And then let's try Okay, that's sense star stuff. And that's precognition. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Uh, all right, so we could take this down to marketing and see if we could find where we need to go from there. But uh, I want to make sure. God. Let's just take it down to marketing. Oh! Oh, great. Elevators don't work! Or I could try going up there, but there's a guard right there as well. Come on, I can't get under there. <coughs> I'm really regretting this whole gas thing. This is not making it easier. By the time I get to that one, that one's worn off. I can only do it once. How 
Did he see me? Okay. Oops, I waited too long. The hell with that. Put some fire on it now. You were on marketing, says Kimosabi, was I? Oh, is that why? Yeah, you're right. I am on marketing. That's what I missed. This is what I missed by dropping all the way down to the bottom. Brad Ludwig says they said the limitation to the implant was one person at a time. It's a long drop. Wow, this is what I missed. I'm so glad I found this. Okay, so now I must be on R&D. Let's quick save. Dear God. This is rough. <laughs> this is really rough. Was I bragging about my stealth skills at the beginning of this broadcast? I wasn't. I, I wouldn't do that. I'm, I, I'm not, you know, I don't have enough hubris to do that. I, it would take a real, just arrogant person to brag about his stealth abilities uh, with a performance like this. No, no, no. I'm humble when it comes to my stealth. I admit my failings. All right, I think they're still hearing me. Let me put some more recon stim on. Let me check out my health status. I've got burns and blisters. <laughs> I still have recon stim. All right, let me try and cure my condition. Even though it's probably worthless, I'm gonna get burned again. That would have done it, but I wanna see if I can, there we go. Heal gel. Super Taram says, like I said, heal frequently, or save frequently. Thank you so much. Kimosabi says, the weapon is heavy. 
Yeah, why am I carrying that around? Let's take this off for now. Okay, well this puts me at the end of this long hallway with these guys walking around. Is this really where I want to go? Is this where I want to be? I don't think this is where I want to be. But it's better than being out there. I mean, I need to get there. All right, I'm going to do a quick save here. Yeah, look, I took off my weapon and now I'm completely hidden. That's the room I need to go into. But then I also need to go over there. That's where I'm going to get the device for R&D. That's the R&D device. That's going to be the terminal. All this gas everywhere is ridiculous. Are they in the adjoining room? They are. Access, no. Is there a terminal around here that can there it is. Okay, so I need to go upstairs to the terminal. When I'm directly under it, I'm fine. The problem is that it's, it's looking that way. Can I take it out with a silenced weapon? An officer. I did not kill an officer, I killed a turret. It's a silenced weapon. Well, turrets count as people. Fun. Okay, let's go the other way. Oh, they're both facing me. There we go. Well, I can get the terminal. Phase computer, overseer program. 
done. You're executing override 145 files. Files successfully revised. Files purged. Copying files to slate. Now, workspace. Let's go to appointments. Krasmar says, I just walked in there with no worries as I looked at them. Well, lucky you. I'm not invisible. Confidential project progress. Faye Sengzavan, uh, location. Okay, so this is meetings, appointments, uh, improvement proposals, version 5.7 post-mortem. Dear Lord, R&D Lab 2. Messages from Niels uh, Baku, post-mortem. Hi, Faye. I'm putting together the post-mortem notes for the meeting. Let me know if I should include the latest results from the clinic. Best Nils. Lucas Drexler updates. Faye, I want you to set up a meeting on our current progress with the confidential project. I want the new timeline and budget ASAP. Lucas, CEO, Infinity Limited. Keisha Boudel, lunch. We're still on for lunch, right? I have Lonnie and Bella meeting us at Interstellar. So, don't be late. We haven't seen each other for months now. Love ya, K. Um, active projects. Robotics TR2 CPU. Type upgrade version 2.7. Summary performance boosting for higher processing. Load demands due to advancements in robotics. Current report. Significant results in version 2.7. Noticeable increase in processing speed, but significant uptick, uptick in heat that we need to counteract. Spacecraft OS. <clears throat> Type investigation summary. Investigate possibility of prototyping spacecraft operating system to break into spacecraft industry. Current report. Wrote up list of requirements for recruiters. We'll need an expert in this field for guidance. Okay. Two of three tasks completed. One more to go, and it's likely the hardest one. R&D ID card. Ooh. Oh, that means we can, <laughs> with the R&D ID card, we can access the door, can't we? Oh, master lock. Do I bother with the master lock? Maybe. Evan Liley says, uh, one thing I noticed in this game and history is the recurring duality of exploration for curiosity of knowledge and slash or for personal profit. Well, I mean, that's been uh, the duality of exploration and uh, scientific, uh, scientific advancement throughout human history. People explored all over the world for both curiosity and also for money. And many of the kingdoms in Europe sent explorers west to conquer land, to find land that they could stake a claim to. Um, Portugal, England, Spain, all of these countries sent explorers west for both curiosity and mainly for profit. All right, let's try it. It's a master lock safe. We might find some goodies inside. Uh, no. All bottom. Hey, that's nice. <clears throat> Perfect, and we have that for the bottom. None. Jeez. All. Or three. All. Three. All. I could use that for the bottom as well. Top. Great. Perfect. So if you use that for the top. Yeah, that leaves three left. Um, sadly, none of those can be used. If we use that for the bottom, we're going to need that for the bottom as well. Which leaves what? It leaves this or that. So if we do that there, we're going to need... Wow. Hmm. Well, I don't know if we can. Because that can't be used, and that can't be used, and that can't be used. Only that, 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 and that can be used. Well, we can't use those unless we use that there 
But then that won't work there. Well, we're not using that there. So then we'd have to use... Really? We'd have to use that. Which means we won't be able to use it for the bottom. But it can't be used in conjunction with these. Unless... No, it won't. Did I mess it up? I think I might have messed it up. Or, no, there we go. I, I forgot that one. Okay, almost there. We need that for that. So we're going to have to put that there. And put that there. And if we do that... We should still have the bottom solved, as we've got that there. And, up, oh, that won't work there. We can't use that for the bottom. We could use that for the bottom. And then use that. Okay. Which means, uh, we use that. And we use that. And we use that. No, we use that. Furious Calibrated Big Bang. This is a non-lethal weapon, right? <laughs> Should I take it just in case? Oh, Chad is saying it's a lethal weapon. All right. Okay, well, I think getting that key card just made this a whole lot easier. Walking right towards that window. There we go. Super Taram says, For your information, Rank 4 Security Perk allows you to use a single digi-pick to eliminate all the keys that aren't required to solve the puzzle. Thank you, Super Taram. Yeah, I realize that, but um, we also get this information by simply clicking on the key, and then it's no longer, it doesn't highlight any of the others. So we know which one it is. Uh, it definitely saves us time to do that, but I don't know if it's worth the digi, the digi pick. The big problem is going to be this turret, but I think that it's pointing the other way, so if we stand under it... Oh no! <clears throat> the key card doesn't work for that door! Crap, what's that key card for then? Uh, Semper Steel says, been binge watching your Fallout 4 playthrough and really enjoying your content. Keep it up. Thank you so much, Semper Steel. That's Semper Steel's first super chat. Okay, well, there's got to be something in here then. Like maybe a terminal we can access with the key card. It does work for the door. Terminal above the door, maybe? Oh, was there a terminal above the door? No, there's no terminal above the door. Oh, there's a slot right there. There's a slot. A key card reader. There's a key card reader right there. But <laughs> it's uh, how do we do this? Yeah, see, that's the thing. 
It works, but we've got a turret directly above us. We've got to, we have to disable the turret. The only way to do that is either to destroy the turret or disable it. So we've got to find a terminal that disables the turret. Asmo says, can you manipulate the guard to open the door? No, the guard would need a key card. I mean, maybe he does have a key card. That's a great question. The hell was that? They're here, right here. Dude has turned around the entire time, but these last two times. Is it because I'm holding a weapon? I'm not holding a weapon, am I? Yeah, no weapon equipped. Huh? Really? Can't get him to do that. The hell was that? Kimosabi says, Go in and close the door, they can't get to you. Yeah, I mean, I could just race through, but I want to try and do it without getting detected. That's the turret control. How am I going to get him to activate this turret control terminal? What? How am I going to do that? Let's see. From up here. Or are we just going through there? Oh my god, we don't need it. We don't need it to begin with. We could come up through there. But that's gonna require a little bit of noise. Uh, the turret, the turret is still gonna be able to see us. So how do we get him to disable the turret so that we can get up here? So if we go any further past this point, the turret sees us. So we need to somehow stay beyond uh, back here. We need to somehow stay back here without that turret seeing us and without that guard seeing us so that we can manipulate the guard and send him to that terminal, which is on the other side of a wall and we can't target. Can we target it through the glass? I don't think we can target it through the glass. 
which means if we can't target it through the glass, we need to be over here so that we can target the guard and have him do that. But to get over here, we gotta somehow evade the turret, which is the entire point of this, to disable the turret so that we can get through. I can't destroy the turret, even with a silenced weapon, because that's going to alert absolutely everything. I could go through here. But this is where I want to go anyway. Maybe I'm coming from the wrong direction. Maybe I should be coming from over there. Because then that'll allow me to come back here and get to this point over here so that I can crouch down. But then I'll have that turret to contend with. If I can somehow drop down here and get behind this pillar before the turret sees me, then I could sneak up here and have the guard disable the turret and then open the door. Aaron says you can shoot it with a silenced weapon. I did shoot it with a silenced weapon. It still exploded and made noise. The gun I used was a silenced weapon. Uh, it's got stealth lasers on it. See? Stealth lasers. The Gaming Dragon says be far away from the turret when you shoot it. Shoot it. I mean, I could try that. Okay, so here we are on the other side of the door. Opening that door opens that, which... No, it allows us into that room, which is what, our, what we're trying to do. So what we need to do is somehow get up top so that we can go around. All right, I think I've got it figured out if we can just find the correct path. Super Taram says non-lethal weapons also disable electronic devices. Well, that's what I wish I had right now. Okay, that laser turret. <laughs> if I go over there, it's going to see me. Really, my best bet is to climb up on that. Got it. <laughs> I missed it. I thought I was going to naturally grab onto it so I could pull myself up. Aaron says, I've done this mission four times with a silenced gun and no alerts. All right, look. This is a silenced weapon. We'll try it with a silenced weapon. I just alerted the entire room. They're out hunting me now. I know you're here. Here, they're here! Plus, Chad earlier was telling me that shooting a turret counts as shooting a person, which I don't want to do, even though it doesn't make any sense. 
Anyway, let's try and do it the way that I was initially planning to do it. Ray says, it's, uh, stealth lasers are a spotting device. Suppressor is a silencer. Really? Oh. I thought stealth lasers meant that the lasers themselves were stealth. Were silenced. The gun is not silenced, says Chad. All right. Well, maybe I was wrong there. Do I have a silenced weapon? Yeah. This has a suppressor. So if what I'm doing now fails, we can try again with a suppressed weapon. I not hang on to that? Why can't I grab onto that? Is it because it's too tall? Maybe not enough room to climb up? Yeah, maybe that's it. Low ceiling. I mean, you'd think I'd be able to creep along that, but I guess not. All right, uh, well then that means going across is really my only solution here. My recon stem has still got three minutes on. I'm gonna have to go deeper in, jump across in the shallow area, and then go around hugging the wall. That's the only way it's not gonna see me. Then if I hug this wall, I should be able to get by without the turret seeing me. Oh, tricky, tricky. <laughs> tricky. Ah, if I can just go through here, I might be golden. Okay. Ah, all right. Now from here, we should 
I say should be able to activate the guard. I think I'm going to do a quick save here. The problem is that the turret is looking right at us over here. So I need to be able to drop down without the turret seeing me. I mean, these, these pipes are right here, but it can look at me. I'm gonna have to time it just right. Ha 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 ha! Now to get across. Ah, uh, now to get across without it seeing me. <laughs> now how am I gonna do that? That's the tricky bit. That's the tricky bit. The problem is that when I'm sneaking, I'm too slow. His sweep is too fast. I gotta wait till it's looking the other way. Let's see if, if it even matters if it looks away. I'm gonna wait for it to look the opposite direction and we'll see if it can still see me. All right, it's going the other way. I've got... check it out. No, I think our premise might be flawed here. I think it doesn't matter where the laser is pointing. It can still see beyond the cone of that laser. Let's see, um... Let's wait till it goes all the way across. Let's see if it can see me if it's swept all the way to the right. And... Under attack. Yeah, did you see that? It, it immediately switched back. Did you see that? Go across the pipes and manipulate the guard from afar. I think I might have ruined it for myself, though. The hell was that? We're still on caution.
Yeah, as soon as I get on those pipes, the turret sees me. Okay, let's see if using an actual silenced weapon matters. This has a suppressor. says caution they're hunting for me right now I'm gonna find you eventually Damn, it got away. Alright! Did that count as a civilian death, though? That's the problem. I'm gonna do a hard save here. Because I still need to get this guy to remove... to activate the turrets. To deactivate the turrets is what I meant. Is he deactivating the turrets? I guess. I guess he's deactivating the turrets? In the other room? There's an emergency alarm? Huh. He came down to look for me. The big question is, does he open the secure access door? Looks like he doesn't. Security access controls. Huh. I should probably hack this first. And it's an expert lock. We gotta save this for that one. Which means we gotta save this for that one. 
which means we need to use this, this, or this. If we use this, that's the only one that works, which means we can use this. No. Oh. We've got overlap. All three of those overlap. If we use this, we have got three that we've got to do. If we use this, we've got two that we've got to do. If we use this, we've got three that we've got to do. That has to be used on the bottom. That has to be used at the bottom. Which means we could use that. Security access controls for Project Dominion internal NeuroAmp prototype status enabled. Disable. Disable NeuroAmp prototype alarm? Yes. Alarm disabled. Okay. Now we just gotta get out of here. <laughs> All right. Let's do a quick save. Oh, he's coming downstairs now. Of course he's coming downstairs now. He never patrolled downstairs earlier. <sighs> okay, now, how do I get out of here? Dear God. No, he's looking right at me. Crap. Fiddler the Helper says, Chat says vent on top of security controls, Ox. Oh my god, was there a vent on top of the security controls that I completely missed? Always look up, says Kimosabe, yeah. How is he in the room now? How is he in the room? He's in the room now. Of course he's in the room. Oh God. <laughs> he's in the room now. Brad says you left the door open. Yeah, I didn't expect to have to come back. Load your save, says the chat. All right. <laughs> He's in the room now. Ugh.
that guy. He's changing his his pathway. He's just constantly changing the path. All right. Yep, you guys were right. Look at that. Wow. Okay. Okay. But what good does it do? What good does it do? <laughs> Chat, you made me reload a save for this. You made me reload a save for this. There's nothing here. This is <laughs> you, got you knew this. You knew this and you had me come all the way back. I was on my way. You knew this. Oh. Why do I listen to you? Look up again? Oh my god, am I doing it again? Did I do it again? Did I do it again? Is it up and I did it again? No, no, I didn't do it again. There's nothing on the roof. There's nothing below me. I can't access this. I can't get out. This is a dead end, guys. Ugh. I'm so done with you. <laughs> Back to what I was doing. There could have been lore, says Common Raccoon. Oh, oh, could there have been? Well, I'd hate to have missed the lore. Glad we did our due diligence here. Were we? It was the light, I know, but I had to turn the light on to see the big jet of gas that was shooting in my path. I'll just take it. I'll cure myself later. Thing is, I already manipulated this guy, didn't I? I already manipulated this guy, so... If I jump across there... He's gonna see me. And of course, he's the one guy that doesn't actually patrol. If I jump across there, he sees me. If I jump up there, he sees me. If I jump down there, he sees me. Ben says, knock him out with a Nova Blast Disruptor. I made the foolish decision of leaving that on the ship. And of course, he's the one guy that doesn't move.
I can't manipulate him again. I can't manipulate him again, guys. Oh my god! He didn't see me. Ha! I don't know how! That was awful. That was an awful stealth mission. <laughs> Let's go get our companion back. I should have taken the elevator to the roof, shouldn't I? Super Taram says, congrats, Ox, a job well done. Thank you. It only took what? Two reloads? Yeah, I only reloaded twice. That's an acceptable number of reloads in a stealth mission, right? I mean, if you're playing like um, assassin games, like uh, what's it called, the Punisher, Hitman, Hitman. If you're playing Hitman, they expect you to try that mission over and over again. They don't expect you to get it right the first time, right? No, no. Hello, excellent to see you. I will watch your back. There we go. All right, now to go to U-S-S-N-N. Super Taram says Wolfenstein, Dishonored, etc. Exactly, all those stealth games, they expect you to get it right the first time. And if you can't, well, you might as well uninstall the game and never reload a save and try again. That's unrealistic. No good stealth game would purposefully make it so that you have to reload a save and try again until you get it right. Right? No, 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 no. Which is why I did it in only two reloads. It's perfectly so you acceptable. Come in. Nice ride. Okay, U-S-S-N-N. New Atlantis West End? How is this my first time discovering this? Okay, quick save. Rika says, with help from the chat. Really? With help from the chat? Sending me to ventilation areas that are complete dead ends, having me reload saves to go go to know. a hatch kind of that leads to nowhere. Point. Yes, thanks, thanks from the chat. Irvin Chadwick says two reloads. Yeah, yeah, it was only two reloads. We're close to the action here in New Atlantis. Prime position to report on the big stories that affect the United Colonies. David Barron. Can I help you? Uh Everything on the slate is true, and the Settled Systems needs to know about it. Or I've got SSNN's next major headline, where I think I've got a news story you'd be very interested in. Let's try next headline. All right. You've got my attention. What's this so-called story about? King Onyx. <laughs> Max Vician Unity says, don't blame us all for one person's mistake. I don't. I do appreciate all of the help you guys have given me, telling me about how my silenced weapon wasn't really silenced as I thought it was 32 broadcasts into this game. So I appreciate it. I deeply do. King Onyx says, this is where the glitch kicked in for me. David Barron spawns off the map and there's no way to get to him to complete the mission. Oh, dear God. Well, I'm glad I didn't get that glitch. 
I suppose I could have used console commands to teleport him to my lo uh, location, <clears throat> but we got it. All right. We could say corporate corruption at its highest level, or I think Infinity LTD's growing body count due to unauthorized human trials says it all. Is that corporate greed claims victims once more? And you have evidence to support this claim. <clears throat> what do you do if a story doesn't check out? If a story doesn't pass a basic fact check, it doesn't air. Simple as that. It's our duty as a news network to maintain a level of trust with our listeners. Louis Philippe says, it was all worth it, Ox. Let bygones be bygones. You're right, Louis. We got there in the end. It doesn't matter how long it took us to get there. Two hours. <laughs> Two hours. It doesn't matter how long it took us to get there. We got there in the end. That's the important thing. Thank you, Louis Philippe. Well, we could give the slate and say, here, all the evidence you need is on this slate or here. Of course, I wouldn't expect SSNN to just believe a perfect stranger. Let's try that. Perfect stranger or not, we won't air anything without some sort of hard evidence. I don't suppose you want to tell me how you got this evidence. Right, that's realistic because news organizations only air news if they have hard evidence. We could say, isn't the truth more important than how it's obtained? Well, obviously the truth is what matters most, but Oftentimes, the source can help substantiate the evidence. We have a reputation to uphold as a news network. I'm sure you can understand that. Lots of options, but we'll say I can't reveal my sources. I'm sure as a reporter, you understand that. Of course. I just hope your source is as reliable as you think they are. Maybe your friend here would care to comment? The friend has no comment. <laughs> I see. Is there at least a name I can cite as my source? Just a concerned citizen. Why am I not surprised? As long as the evidence is adequate and verifiable, I expect it'll be aired within the hour, if not sooner. Now, if you'll excuse me, I obviously have some work to do. Whoo! I'm exhausted. But it's a new dawn, a new day. And the world has a little less corruption in it. And I didn't have to do it in my boxers. Not bad. Everything good? We're here to help. Keep your nose clean. Last thing I wanted to charge you for a DP in A and B, B and E, or heaven forbid, in it won't be for a while. How can I be of service, Captain? Whew. Always a satisfying moment to return to your ship. Corco? That room of yours better be clean next time I go oh in there. God. I'll Ready get to it, Dad. Get to. I promise. I gotta get rid of the codes. Understand? Uh, fine, fine, okay. I'm going. The codes are particularly egregious, uh, not because the other companions don't chat all the time. They do. But because their conversations Orbital are so long. Achieved. We're spacebound again. They go on for like a full minute.
Back to Voli 2. Or back to Vol 2. Voli 1? Vol 2. Voli Alpha. You see any heat leeches? You've got them. Equipment and accessories. This is going to be gratifying. <clears throat> I hope it's a good payoff. I want to see Ularu or Usuru or whatever her name is get ousted. I want to see Infinity Core get just desserts. Quick save. I've yet to hear anything of note on SSNN. Let's hear your report. They said within the hour. <clears throat> uh, it's only a matter of time. It's sure to be the story of the year. Not a single hitch. David Barron should be running the story any minute. Just give it time. I just got here. Let's try not a single hitch. Good. David won't be able to resist a story like this. He'll do some preliminary confirmations which will be enough to get the broadcast out to the public. And how did the NeuroAmp perform? It was extremely useful, or I never had any need for it, or I wasn't about to use it to force people to do things against their will. <laughs> I mean, I had the power, I needed the power. It was better than killing them. It was extremely useful. I thought it would be. So now it's just a waiting game for SSNN to break the news. Once the story airs, we have another board meeting scheduled to decide how to handle Infinity. Go ahead, Maeve. The SSNN broadcast has started. Shall I patch it through? Yes! Yes. Yes. Thank you. Infinity LTD and Lucas Drexler are currently under investigation for a number of violations, including murder for hire, unauthorized human trials, and corporate theft. Authorities representing the UC and the Freestar Collective have been dispatched to a consolidated mining station and the clinic. Both locations are believed to hold numerous victims. Drexler's motivation appears to be an attempt to launch a new product based off stolen information from a competitor. The details on the project itself and the competitor have yet to be confirmed. This has been David Barron for SSNN. No mention of Ularo or whatever Perfect. her name is? This exposure puts Infinity right where we want them. The meeting will begin momentarily. But I want you to discuss the options we have with the other members. Infinity's net worth is about to hit rock bottom. So this gives us the opportunity to win a little more public faith. How does Infinity's loss gain Ryujin public faith? Infinity is about to crumble before the eyes of the public. They employ thousands of people, and those thousands of people are now worried about their jobs. That's where we come in. First, we'll issue a public statement expressing disgust at their leadership, but sympathy for the innocent workers. <laughs> the That's worst, when we offer to acquire them. A hostile takeover. Man of Warb says, isn't it a bummer that there isn't a single Volus on Voli? Yes, I also explored Voli without encountering a single Volus, and those are the thoughts that came to my mind. Two options. Ryujin buys Infinity LTD and no one loses their job, or if you intend to swoop in and save Infinity LTD, they don't deserve it. I mean, from everything that we've seen, it was a management and executive problem. The workers that we encountered while exploring Infinity were unaware of what was going on higher up, and if anything, expressed dissatisfaction with their working conditions. So, I think it's going to be for the greater good, the greater good, 
I shouldn't have said that. <clears throat> if we buy Infinity... I'm waiting. ...to help all of the employees. Quite right. The truth is, we'll be making evaluations. We'll shed any employees who don't make the cut, slowly but surely. By incorporating Infinity, we eliminate a competitor, get their best employees and contracts, and all while boosting our public perception. I suppose it is all very simple when you do not consider the impact on actual human lives. Just your bottom line. Why is Andresia upset about this? I mean, sure, it would be better for absolutely everyone at Infinity if Ryujin acquired them and then kept absolutely everyone on. But you can't expect Ryujin to value the hiring decisions of Infinity. You can't expect Ryujin to say, oh, I'm sure Infinity hired only the best people, every single one of them. It's perfectly acceptable for them to let go of the worst employees of Infinity, especially when the alternative is that Ryujin doesn't step in and acquire Infinity, and Infinity just crumbles, and everyone loses their job. So I'm not sure why Andrea is upset about that. Not only is this best for Ryujin, but it also seems to be the most... Pay attention. ...empathetic and ethical thing for Ryujin to do at this moment. It's better for their company, they get better minds working for them, and it's better for the employees at... Um, Infinity. Do you really think Infinity LTD has any employees of value? We've already done some initial evaluations, so I'm certain of it. Infinity has a lot of appeal being in New Atlantis. I'm sure plenty of brilliant minds are there because they prefer the location. Plus, there's always that handful of people that think they've got something to prove by not working for Ryujin. As if other corporations are really any better. <clears throat> Sounds like a win-win situation to me, or and here I thought Ryujin might be doing the right thing for once. Again with this dialogue option, what? The right, it, would the right thing really be to hire everyone at Infinity and make sure they all have jobs? I don't understand, like, Ryujin doesn't have an obligation to give everyone a job. They're not... A job tree where people go to just pluck job apples from the job branches because they're free for the taking. Ryujin has a, an, a, a responsibility to not only their shareholders, but to everyone else that works at Ryujin to hire the best people for the company to make the company well. better. So we'll say sounds like a win-win situation to me. I'm glad we're on the same page. Which is why I'd like you to talk to the board to convince them this is the right move. There are several who might disagree, and you have the perfect tool to help sway them. Oh, I don't know if I want to use my tool on them for that. You want me to use the internal neuroamp on the board members? Yes, that's exactly what it's designed for. The bright side being, they'll never know. Oh, okay, that's... That's a bit unethical. I don't know if I can do that. Maybe I can pass a persuasion check instead. I mean, essentially, we'll get the same result if they give me a persuasion check. But I won't feel like I'm violating their minds. I mean, it wasn't so bad when we were inside Infinity because these were security guards who were actively looking for us to murder us, right? So, if anything to avoid murder and to avoid having to kill them, fine. But to change someone's opinion in a board meeting without them realizing it? I don't like that. I'm not going to use the internal neuroamp on my coworkers. I'll talk to them, but I can't make promises. Or if they don't agree, I'll be sure to make them listen. I'm just going to flat out tell her that I'm not going to use the neuroamp on coworkers. Pay attention. Fine. Whether or not you use the internal neuroamp is up to you. But I still want results. Okay. You'll find most of the board members in their offices preparing. Vina is also here waiting for the meeting to start. We'll need at least 50% of the vote to go our way. In the event of a tie, I will make the final decision. I trust you'll get it done. I'm disappointed in her. I'm disappointed that she would ask me to do that. I mean, I still think that she's a more ethical leader than the Usaru person because she you know, straight up worked with people who were comfortable with murder I in hope order- I others will give you more insight. In, in order to oust her competition. 
Uh, but the fact that she's willing to manipulate people's minds using high technology to get her way is really disappointing. Um, Super Taram says, I chose infinity equal buy, amp equals bad. It's the best in my opinion. Yeah, that's, that's the way I'm feeling as well. So she's not ousted yet? Here, let's do a quick save. I thought she'd be gone by now. Like, we just planted evidence. The, the story said that news of her involvement would be spread all over the, the airwaves. Why is she still here? Ularu. Did Masako send you to try and convince me to acquire Infinity LTD? I think we both know that's not going to work. Whoops, I should have used uh, Hippolyta. <clears throat> and we could say, if you acquire, <clears throat> if you acquire an Infinity LTD, you'd save jobs. It's good public perception. Infinity LTD doesn't deserve to be part of the Ryujin family. It should be shut down. Or I feel like you just want to be difficult. Or well, not with that attitude. Uh, let's try this. Our public perception is good enough. If you ask me, reaching out to save Infinity just makes us look weak. The internal neuroamp gives us the power to crush our competitors, not take them under our wing. This is exactly why Masako's time as CEO is finished. Um. You're all way too eager to use the neuroamp on one another. I'm not using the, the internal neuroamp on anyone, it's too dangerous. Or Masako is a better CEO than you'll ever be, or I'm already one step ahead of you. Let's say you're all way too eager to use the neuroamp on one another. Oh? Your response tells me Masako must have given you similar advice. It'd be unlike her to not fully exploit an advantage. Especially when she believes acquiring Infinity is the right thing to do. No perception option? Or persuasion option? No persuasion option. Why are you so against acquiring Infinity LTD? The corporate world will hear SSNN's story and believe Ryujin exposed Infinity because they stole from us. It sends a strong message. But acquiring Infinity could be interpreted as a safety net. Infinity tried to screw us over, yet they still survived. We need to be sending a much stronger message. If you mess with Ryujin, we'll shut you down. Period. I mean, there is an argument to be said for being the strong man in this situation and completely obliterating a competitor if they mess with you. However, we made sure to, to make it, a, to keep it a secret that we were the competitor whose technology they were trying to steal. We didn't tell the uh, SSNN guy who the competitor was. SSNN couldn't figure it out. So even if this were true, no one in the public, except for maybe industry insiders, are going to know that it was Ryujin technology that Infinity stole. So being the tough guy in this situation isn't sending as strong a message as she thinks it is. We could say it's heartless to let Infinity die when you know there are benefits Did to acquiring them. I could care less about Infinity LTD. They're not my problem. Or taking on Infinity would be a huge liability, so I'm with you. Let's try the heartless option. Ryujin Industries isn't a corporation built on heart. I think you know that. The benefits may exist, but the message will be stronger. As long as everyone has Ryujin's best interests in mind, this should make for an interesting meeting. I guess I failed there. They didn't give me a persuasion option. They robbed me of my persuasion op options, forcing me to use the neuroamp. Um, speaking of, I plan on bringing up the internal neuroamp as an issue in the meeting. An issue? That would be a foolish move. Dalton and Alexis are the only two against it. You'd never get the rest to shut it down. And here we go. We could use manipula manipulation to say the internal neuroamp is dangerous. That tech only spells trouble for Ryujin's future. If you really cared about Ryujin's best interests, you'd vote to shut it down. Or do you really think the good aspects of the internal neuroamp outweigh the bad? 
As long as we have the proper safeguards and rules in place, the benefits exponentially outweigh the drawbacks. Even if we limit the usage to Ryujin Industries employees alone, the advantages are too numerous to count. Oh, Bethesda, <laughs> you're making me a hypocrite here. They're putting me in a situation where in order to convince these people to not use the internal NeuroAmp as a mind manipulation tool against their competitors and each other, I have to personally use the manipulation tool to convince them of that. That's devious. <laughs> I'm not going to get the result I want if I do that. Well, we've only talked to one person yet uh, so far. We don't know what talking with the others will do. I'm tempted to go through the dialogue of the other uh, characters to see what it is, to see if we can get to that 50-50 before, before resorting to becoming I'm a hypocrite. I'm losing patience. Before resorting to becoming a hypocrite and using the manipulation tool myself. So we'll say if you really cared about Ryujin's best interests, you'd vote to shut it down. Please. Ryujin's best interests are long-term success and growing profits. The internal NeuroAmp provides both. Now, if you'll excuse me, I still have a lot of preparations to make. I've got two yes on that now, and zero no. Dear Lord, there are seven board members. I need four to get a majority. I need four, and then there's also the executive override, so this is going to be tricky. I'm hoping that they'll give me a persuade option. Let's go ahead and take an Hippolyta. You could use your power to predict answers as well, says chat, says Cosmar. Yeah, you're right. Precognition. are looking interesting truly amazing. Just the person I wanted to see. I want to get all the details locked down for this meeting, and I believe you to be one of the best sources available. Uh -huh. I'm happy to help answer any questions you might have. Good. I prefer first-hand feedback when available. You've had the chance to encounter members of Infinity LTD throughout your assignments here. Do you think they're worth redemption? And why? The majority of those workers are innocent. They didn't know what was going on. Infinity is filled with incompetent workers. Taking them on is a liability we don't need. Or of course, if we can save the jobs of thousands of people, we should do it. What makes you think? I actually had contact with enough of them to know. You can tell a lot by just looking at a workspace or simply observing a person in their business environment. Perhaps I mistakenly assumed that as an operative here, observation was a talent of yours. So that's the problem with precognition. We can't see the second sentence. Let's try this. Oh, I didn't mean in regards to Drexler's actions. More in the sense of, should a superior company like Ryujin make room for so many potentially lackluster employees? <clears throat> hmm. So, without using manipulation, we there's no option that that causes us to succeed here. Sounds like you've already made your decision, so why even ask me? Perhaps I wanted to see if I could be convinced otherwise. It's easy to say it's the right thing to do for someone in your position. But for me, Infinity LTD is a huge financial unknown. It's high risk versus mediocre reward. Right, well, we'll try to get through this without using manipulation first, and if we have to, we can reload a save. You have the opportunity to do some good here. Why not take it? 
That is a plea more well spent on Genevieve or Alexis. I prefer to focus on the numbers and leave emotions out of my decision making. Gosh, and it dumps us back in here. We have to use manipulation or say, fine, just screw thousands out of a job. I'm not sure even why I thought you'd care. Hmm. Your disdain is noted. And perhaps you thought I'd care because you're hopeful. Next question. What is your opinion on how Masako handled the mole situation? Ah, uh, I still don't feel like it's resolved. Masako has still accused the wrong person, and we haven't gotten the right person. Uh, we could say it was sloppy, and a mole should never have been possible in the first place. We caught the mole, so I'd say it was a success. Or I think it was well handled. It proves how capable Masako is at handling any situation. Let's try that. And why do you feel it was well handled? Andreja Please liked note it. Please I'm not disagreeing. I just want to know the why behind your statement. Well, uh, we'll say Masako remained cool and stuck to a plan. Prematurely releasing this information would only cause a panic. I agree. Should Masako have informed us too early, we may have all turned on each other. I appreciate the insight. I suppose I should ask if there's anything I can do for you, considering how helpful you've been. Uh, the internal neuroamp. Tech like that is dangerous and should be banned. Let's try that. It's only dangerous to those who can't afford one. Hence the added motivation that will bolster sales. Oh, we've got an Andresia option. Andrea, I'm sure you have some thoughts on this matter you could share. Ah, your companion. I would be interested in another perspective. You are naive if you think tech like this will remain under control. Think of the Neuroamp in the hands of a Varun Zealot or Crimson Fleet Pirate. It is not a matter of if it will happen, but a matter of when. Will you be equipped to handle the repercussions when that day comes? What makes you so certain this is inevitable? Not that I doubt the scenario. Simple. It is human nature. Nuclear weapons, chemical warfare, xeno warfare, mechs. Enemies and competitors will get their hands on this tech eventually and reverse engineer it to use however they see fit. I admit, you've properly pushed my concerns to the very edge. Hmm. Your friend here is quite convincing. The internal neuroamp does indeed come with risks, none of which I am inclined to take anymore. This has been rather enlightening for me. I appreciate the time. Okay, well, we got one option that we wanted without having to resort to manipulation, thanks to Andresia. Hey there. And how's my favorite patient doing? Not seeing any temporal memory flashes or losing time, I hope. Oh, I forgot to use my power again. Are those actual side effects? What? Uh, no, of course not. They're purely theoretical. Uh, I feel great. No side effects as far as I can tell. Oh, that's great. I'd say Project Dominion is ready for legitimate human trials in that case. One step closer to seeing market approval. Genevieve is going to be so excited. So, tell me what you think of the Neuroamp. <clears throat> um, Vina, this tech is dangerous. No one should have this sort of power. I hope you're not actually suggesting that the technology I spent years working on and perfecting never sees the light of day. This is groundbreaking work. My life's work. Finally, a persuade option. And my Hippolyta has worn off. <laughs> you're a scientist. Hear me out. Just look at it from every angle. Fine, fine. Make your case. And it's only a four? Really? We don't have an auto-equipped. Ooh, we've got a, a research methods that says, I know you've covered all your bases in your research. You know the data is against it here. There's always data against something, no matter how innocuous. Let's 
Vina, as the sole owner of the internal NeuroAmp, I know exactly how dangerous it is. Well, perhaps I really do need more data. Oh, come on! Oh, no! I've only got one turn, and they don't give me a two. We could say you're a brilliant scientist. You can't truly b believe the internal NeuroAmp is safe. Oh, I can see where you're coming from. Well, this conversation's made me feel like a proper monster. Ha! Ah! But you're right. In a perfect world, tech like this is used for good. But this world is far from perfect. You're not a monster. You got lost in the excitement of discovering something new. It is. It really is. For years, my only focus has been, is this possible? And then, how do I make it work? I never stopped to consider if it was right, or what it would mean. I guess it'll be up to a vote either way. It's not on the meeting agenda, so I assume you'll bring it up yourself? We just have to hope the others will see reason. So the next question is, what will the fate of Infinity LTD be? Well, we can pass a research methods check to say there's bound to be something inspiring or new in their research. That's what I'm hoping for. They may be the underdog, but that doesn't mean they don't have a brilliant mind or two. Well, this has certainly been the most interesting conversation of my day. All we can do now is look forward to the meeting, right? See you in there. All right, we are currently at 50-50 for both of the major options. I'm going to do a quick save right here just in case I need to reload so I don't have to go through all of those conversations again. Um, we need to have some luck with these final three. We only need one more, I think. No, 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 we need two more to get the majority, at least for one of the options. Ooh, look at that. Your surgical wound's healing like a dream. Gonna take my Hippolyta. And my power. Even when I see it with my own eyes, it is still hard to believe. Man of Warp says, honestly, though, is using a NeuroAmp's powers any different from using the Artifact's powers? I think it is different because the Artifact's powers don't actively change a person's free will. To, to, as far as I know, I mean, I haven't gotten all of the powers yet. But, um... It allows us to predict what other people will do. We're not actively causing them to make a decision that they don't want to do. The only exception I can think of is um, the one where we can cause them to put down their weapons. But even then, we're using our powers to uh, de-escalate a situation. These are people who were trying to kill us. And the only alternative is to killing them. And if forcing them to put down their weapons um, saves their life, potentially, uh, it, it's a better option. And that's, again, why I was more comfortable using the powers inside Infinity only against people who were actively trying to harm us or prevent us from achieving what we needed to do. Is Masako checking up on me to make sure I'm on her side? Um... <clears throat> Why would you think Masako sent me? Because that's what I do. You want something in this business? You don't pull any punches. The only real question is just how persuasive she asked you to be. Interesting. Well, um, I didn't realize there were sides to take. We could lie and say. In this business, there's always a side. And right now, I'm backing Masako. We just need to grab Infinity LTD while it's got the public's full attention. I'm all about free PR, especially when it's painting us in a good light. Okay. Well, we could use manipulation here to get her to choose an option we don't want her to choose. Um, what are the benefits of acquiring Infinity LTD? Infinity is that sad company in distress with thousands of employees terrified of their futures right now. We are the warm embrace of security coming to rescue them. There must be a downside to acquiring Infinity LTD, so what is it? The only downsides are the unknowns. Lyndon and Alexis are going to have a lot on their hands. 
Not that I'm getting off easy. Whatever they find, if it hits the public, that's going to fall on my shoulders, too. Okay, coming to the rescue of all those innocent workers will really look good for us. I'm sure I can squeeze enough goodwill out of this to last us at least a year. Okay, so we got her on board for Infinity LTD. Uh, now we just got to figure out the NeuroAmp. Is the public all you actually care about? The consumer is our lifeblood. So capturing their wants and desires? Of course it's all I care about. I'm sure I wouldn't be in this position today if it wasn't. You know, if you really want to keep Ryujin in the public's good graces, there's one big thing to consider. All right. I suppose you've earned the right to voice your opinion after everything you've done, qualified or not. So let's hear it. Have you considered just how powerful the internal NeuroAmp is? Of course which is why I know it requires some very delicate handling. But unlike Alexis, I believe we can get the proper restrictions and regulations in place to have a marketable product. We do it every day with weapons we arm ourselves and our ships with. The internal neuroamp, that sh research should be banned. The possible backlash on tech like this is not lost on me. However, the internal neuroamp will define the next era of tech with Ryujin at the forefront. It's not an opportunity you just walk away from. Do you really think a product that can manipulate unknowing citizens will be accepted by the public? Not when you word it like that. But a product that can settle disputes or help broaden someone's point of view? Then you really have something that consumers will buy into. Well, it seems your talents really do stretch beyond just being an operative. Good talk. Maybe I'll even consult you on future endeavors. Did she make... Did she not make a decision? That's five of seven and she didn't make a decision. What? It's still two yes, two no for internal neuroamp, but three yes, three no for infinity LTD. Did it glitch or are we going to have to convince her later? Okay. Thanks for the extra insight. Well... We still have a chance to pull this off. All right, I need a I need a quick bio break. Be right back. Hang tight, everybody.
Okay. Thank you for your patience. Do we still have Hippolyta active? 34 seconds left on it. Might as well take another one. Man, I'm blasting through all my Hippolyta right now. <laughs> I think I still have some on the ship, though. Kind of power. Hours in the day. I'm glad it is in your hands. If you need something, make it quick. I'd like to make sure my arguments are solid before this meeting. <clears throat> I heard you're not a fan of acquiring Infinity LTD. You heard correct. I've every reason to believe that Infinity LTD is the Pandora's box of corporations. Persuade! Oh, yay! Hooray! Legal issues aside, the pros of acquiring Infinity LTD far outweigh the cons. All right, I could use the entertainment. Tell me why Infinity is a good asset. Oh, we could use manipulation during the persuasion check? What? All right, well, uh, here we go. You can't tell me that negotiating an airtight deal doesn't appeal to you. If it was anyone other than Infinity, I assure you it would. Come on! Can't you just put aside your concerns and care about people for once? I do get a little out of touch at times. It's an argument worth considering. Huh. Well, what do you know? I think you just convinced me. Talent like yours belongs in the courtroom. Yes! Four... For yes to infinity. All right, no matter what happens, we're getting that. But now the other one. Have you been preparing for having the internal neuro app on the open market? Wait, no. I'm curious about your thoughts on the internal neuro app. Nice to know someone is. Everyone's too busy praising its completion to think about the dangers it could represent. First off, if I find out you use that device on me, I will tie you up in court on whatever charges <laughs> I can conjure for the rest of your life. Don't worry, I haven't used Second, it. Second, that tech is one major human rights violation that no legal team wants to fight. Okay, these I'll this is do whatever be I can to make sure it's either severely delayed or collects dust in storage. Well, that is one very clear position. Asma says, I didn't like this woman, but she is right. Yeah, in this particular situation, I completely agree with her. The manipulation check is to get a result that we don't want. But we can get more lore from her by saying, is there anything positive you can think of about the internal neuro amp? Tech like this only has good applications when you have complete control over who uses it. Once that tech hits a market, open or private, that control is gone. And not only that, the tech is out there to be advanced or modified by anyone who might get their hands on it. Why dislike the internal neuroamp versus the regular neuroamps? Because the external neuroamps are built to help the user on a personal level. They aid in reason, communication, confidence, all things that can make the difference in a person's self-image. Exactly. And yes, they can be abused. But that's why there are laws regarding improper usage. Okay, well we could manipulate her or say, agreed, the internal neuro app never should have seen the light of day. Well, I'm both glad and surprised to hear the one person who has one say that. Masako is lucky to have you at her disposal, you know? You may be the greatest asset, aside from the internal neuroamp, that Ryujin has. This exchange has been surprisingly insightful, but now I really do need to get back to my notes. One more board member to go. And we have to get this person to agree with us about the neuroamp or else Masako's gonna be the tiebreaker and she's likely going to go for it. So we may need to use manipulation in this case. 
Let's hope it doesn't come to that. Where's my Hippolyta? I got 25 seconds on it, but I've got an auto persuade banked. So I'm not going to use another Hippolyta. This meeting should prove to be very interesting. I assume Masako briefed you on her preferred outcome. Yes, but I refuse to use the internal neuro amp to ensure votes to acquire Infinity LTD. Good on you. Oh, good. It would be almost fitting to see the technology immediately turned on those who fostered its creation. If it were up to me, I'd have shut down Project Dominion a long time ago. Yes! I knew it was a grave security risk. And look what happened. If you were against Project Dominion from the... Or you were against it from the start? Completely. I understand the success it can bring for the corporation, but my only concern here is security. It's not that the board majority fails to see the dangers. It's that they believe we can overcome them. That hubris could easily bring this corporation down one day. Yes. I only hope it won't be on my watch. <clears throat> Don't tell me you actually disagree with Masako on something. It's not often, but yes. And I'm not the only board member that initially voted against moving forward with the research. Okay. Well, we could pass a manipulation check to get a result we don't want. Or we can say we saw firsthand how dangerous that tech is. It should never go to market. You read my mind. Let's just hope Masako and the others see it that way. Plus, if we vote to acquire Infinity LTD, we're about to add a significant workload onto my team. The last thing I want to deal with are any more incidents this new neuroamp might cause. We've got majority for both of the major decisions and we didn't have to use any manipulation. Do you think this is the right time to acquire Infinity LTD? Well, the timing could be better, but I don't feel strongly one way or another about the acquisition. We've gone through our fair share in the past and this one would be no different. If Masako wishes to bring Infinity into the fold, I will not stand against it. <clears throat> we could say then vote against Infinity. I'm with you. It's too big of a risk. Or the acquisition is worth the work. I know your team can handle it. I imagine we're looking at months of work. Infinity LTD is obviously not known for their security. I only hope that Masako and the others will be patient with the process. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some preparations to make. We'll be announcing Ularu's termination of employment at this meeting. Yay! So, I need to have security ready to escort her off the premises. Okay. Seven of seven done. And just to double check that we got the majority we need, because remember, Masako is the tiebreaker. Oh, it's not going to show us. Uh, it's not going to show us anymore. I think I read the numbers right. I think we've got the majority that we need. Let's do a quick save here as everybody... Ooh, everybody's moving over to the meeting. Come on inside, everyone. Quick save. I'm going to wait for everyone to sit down. Or we're just waiting on Don't Masako. Don't wander into any restricted areas. And Ularu. And there they come. Oh, and Dalton. No, <laughs> Linden. You operatives really will wear anything. I'm wearing an operative outfit. Hello. This was assigned to me by your company. Constantly criticizing my, out my outfit here. Okay. The board is convened. Let's quick save. Daniel Holmes says, you missed my last message, but I wanted to say hi. This game is so good. The longer I play, the better it gets. Thank you, Daniel. Let me see. Yeah, previously you said, hi, Ox. Love this game. Hope your day is good. Thank you, Daniel. Sorry, I was uh, busy making decisions about dialogue, but I'm having a great day so far. I'm really enjoying this quest line. I'm glad we're resolving it today, and it's good to see you back on the program. All right, let's go and use a Hippolyta just in case we need it. I've got more on this ship, so this is my last one, but it's going to be okay. 
sense star stuff. These are such a gift. Though your enemies might disagree. Or whatever it's called. And here we go. All right, everyone. As you all know, we've successfully exposed Infinity LTD's botched human trials and murder for hire through SSNN. The public is demanding their leadership, namely Lucas Drexler, face trial. And he's probably writing his resignation as we speak. Ryujin will be launching a statement, but I believe now is the perfect time to acquire Infinity LTD. <clears throat> oh, future unclear for all of these, really? Our intention to purchase an purchase Infinity LTD would put the employees' minds at ease. The announcement would garner public faith in Ryujin. We should act now before a competitor beats us to it. Masako hasn't steered you wrong yet. I trust her judgment, or we could say nothing. Let's try. The announcement would garner public faith in Ryujin. The operative is right. Legal ramifications are a certainty, but the benefits far outweigh the disadvantages. Arguments? Infinity LTD could be the Pandora's box of financial and legal risks. I simply cannot support an acquisition. We should be crushing our competition, not rescuing them from their own flaws. This is a weak decision, Masako, and you know it. In fact, I move that Masako be removed from CEO altogether. Ularu, this isn't a line you want to cross. And considering you're the mole, if anyone's going to be removed from power, it's going to be you. Hold up. Are you saying you lied to us? Dalton, the last meeting we had, you distinctly said Imogene was the mole, and she'd been dealt with. Oh dear. <laughs> we only lied about Imogene so Ularo would incriminate herself. Imogene was just another victim. Ularo set her up. Imogene is innocent. She played a vital role in helping expose Ularu. This is getting a little awkward. So we had to lie to get the job done. I'm sure you're all familiar with those methods. We'll say Imogene is innocent. Do you even have any proof to back up this outrageous claim? Of course we do. The malicious code you hid on this slate to upload incriminating evidence against Masako onto Lucas Drexler's computer. To put it bluntly, Ularu... You're fired. Security will hold you in your office until a proper exit interview can be done. This isn't right. I should at least have the opportunity to resign. And allow you to still be marketable to a competitor? I don't think so. This may be news to me, and I will be reviewing the evidence closely. But this isn't something you just get to walk away from. Everybody's turning another way. We could say, I'm sorry, Ularu, or you're going away for a long time, or enjoy unemployment, or you're finished here, Ularu. Do we really take the opportunity to rub it in? Yeah, maybe just a little. Security, escort Miss Chen to her office and see that she stays put. You'll regret this, all of you. I believe the only regret would be trusting you to begin with. All right, back to business. All in favor of acquiring Infinity LTD? Aye. Aye. All against? Nay. Good. Alexis, start drawing up the necessary documentation. All right. Anyone have anything else they'd like to bring up? We could say nothing. We could say I move to postpone production on the internal neuro amp. The internal neuroamp is too dangerous to market, or I believe work on the internal neuroamp needs to be shelved. Let's shelve it. The internal neuroamp is a key component of Ryujin Industries' success for the next 10 years, if not more. Why would we shelve it after we've finally perfected it? Well... Future unclear for all of these. It takes away a person's free will, it's not right. The moment the public learns about it, no one will trust anyone anymore, especially Ryujin. 
The internal neuro amp is basically a mind control device. It should be banned. There are too many moral repercussions that need answers before it's safe to market. And my Hippolyta has already worn off. What would they respond best to? Probably losing trust in the public eye. So let's try this one. I can't believe I'm saying this, but he's right. Regardless of the pros, the cons are too morally and ethically irresponsible to move forward with. I must agree. We can't go through with production on technology like this until certain safeties can be guaranteed. <sighs> Very well. All in favor of shelving Project Dominion. Aye. Aye. Yes. Nay. Vina, prep Project Dominion for storage. Any other matters to bring forth? Well, that was it, right? Or... None? This concludes our order of business for today. Yes! I think I got all the results I wanted. So much work to do. Okay, everyone's going back. Let's see if we can chat with them on their way out. Well, I feel like that lifted quite the weight off my shoulders. I can't imagine there's going to be anything easy about this transition. Okay, Masako. Fighting alongside you is never dull. Shelving the internal neuroamp. Not the outcome I anticipated. <clears throat> um. We'll go, the board agrees. This decision is for the best. The truth remains. Lucas Drexler learned a hard lesson, and we exposed a traitor among us. You've proven yourself to be quite the asset here at Ryujin. We could say, I hope that means I'll be getting a raise. Thank you. That's quite a compliment coming from Ryujin's CEO, or I was only doing my job. Well, that, if that's your way of saying thank you, you're welcome. We'll go thank you. It's well earned and deserved. I truly appreciate the work you put into exposing Ularu. No operative has ever had to investigate our own to the extent that you did. I can imagine it may have been a lot of pressure, considering you were fairly new at the time. There was no honor in Ularu's plan. It did not deserve to succeed. How often does Ryujin have someone turn against the company? Not often, and certainly not to this degree. We have the occasional employee consider selling information, but thanks to our security and operations teams, we always catch them before any damage can be done. This was the first time anyone from either department was involved. Well, let's say no pressure at all. These are the types of jobs I live for. I hope that enthusiasm sticks with you for the foreseeable future. She disliked that. Imogene's instincts were right about you. Now, as promised, I have your bonus. I hope you'll find it appropriate for all you've done. And I'm promoting you to senior operative. You've more than earned it. My companion disliked it. She's liked everything that I've done so far today, but that last one, she disliked it. Give me the details on, the, on my new position. As for the details, I think someone back on the operations floor would prefer to explain those to you. If you are free soon, could we talk? Okay. Andresia wants to talk. I suppose now you can add climbing the corporate ladder to your list of accomplishments. I think it is perhaps for the best that the research program will come to an end. Where that neuroamp technology could lead, there are many bad outcomes. Too many. <clears throat> What's the worst outcome you can think of? 
I was going to say that everyone with an internal neuroamp all trying to control each other would be the worst. But perhaps even more dangerous would be only one person managing to control everyone else. Well, we can say it almost certainly would be a disaster. Already there has been too much conflict between corporations vying for this technology. First Infinity, then Ryujin. Who knows what might be next? Ryujin might try to take over the world. Worse, all the worlds. We'll never know what might have been. The tech would have eventually fallen into the wrong hands. You presume it had not already? Interesting. Uh-oh. You know the people behind <laughs> Ryujin better than I, but... I am not convinced they could be trusted. The project will be... shelved, they call it? As I said, too many other bad outcomes. This is for the best. With the neuroamp matter settled, we should move on to other things, yes? Okay. No likes or dislikes from her in that conversation. I am here for you, should you need me. Take care of yourself. Okay. We did it. And that's it for Ryujin. Now we need to, oh, here we go. Let's talk to Imogene. Let's talk to Imogene and see if we can uh, wrap things up here at Ryujin. Um, oh, let's go to operations. I heard about your run-in with Tomo. That guy will never learn. Yay, she's back. You've certainly shaken things up around here. I still can't believe Ularu tried to frame me. An obvious misjudgment on my part. But now that's all in the past. It's time to get back to your typical day-to-day. -day. Really? Right back to work? Of course. If you think anyone here believes in downtime, forget it. It's good to see you back in the office, Imogene. And I'd say it's good to be back if I hadn't returned to a mountain of paperwork. <laughs> now, since you were new, you've been dealing with people, but most of our assignments are generated on the mission board. The board holds any available assignments that our techs have pieced together and I've approved. Questions? So, I don't get to deal with you anymore? No, but try to see that as an improvement, since I certainly do. Ouch. The mission board is more efficient for both of us. Okay. Uh, what's a mission board? Well, after this conversation, you can head up to your office and see for yourself. Just think of it as a computer that lets you pick and choose your assignments at will, rather than having to deal with me all the time. I have my own office now? What kind of assignments are these? Nothing you aren't already familiar with. You experienced the majority of what we do here during your training, if you recall. Uploading a few files, manipulating a narrative or two, obtaining schematics, that's eh, just more of the same. Ah, no, no, I'm good. Good. The mission board is generally self-explanatory anyway. With your promotion, you've earned yourself an office, so whenever you're ready, you can find your own personal mission board inside. Hey! And the best perk of them all, you're free to make your own hours. Oh, and, uh, congratulations, of course. Can I access the mission board outside of Ryujin Tower? No, only within the tower. The security risk would be far too much to allow access to that data in a public space. Thanks, Imogene. I'll see you around. You certainly will. Go check out the board. 
And if you have any questions, I suppose I can start up an open door policy just for you. Yay. Okay, examine the mission board. I've got my own office. Look at that. All right, Oxhorn's personal office at Ryujin. Professionals calibrated coachman. I think I've got a better one. And there's the mission board. I can't access the terminal, though. Okay, Sabotage Hope Tech, of course. Plant evidence at Trade Tower Generdyne Industries. Hack Trade Tower, Stroud Eklund Corp. <laughs> Already just awful, awful, awful stuff. Uh, <laughs> we could go to, I wonder if we could go to Walter and tell him that we've got a mission to go hack his corporation. Yikes, all right. I'm not doing any of these right now. There we go. Well, with that done, what do we have tagged? The location of the ECS constant, of course. Um, well, there is one thing that I'd like to do. While I was shooting footage for a lore video offline, I stumbled upon a ship that has something to do with Ryujin Industries <clears throat> within the orbit of Copernicus uh, 2. I didn't keep that save. I have something for you. Any adventure you can fly away from. I didn't keep is, that is save that how the because I didn't want to stumble upon any lore off camera and rob you guys of the opportunity of going through it with me, but I remembered that it was in the orbit of Copernicus 2. So, unless it's a random encounter, it should still be there. And I want to go check it out. Juno says the chat. Yeah, it was something about Juno. So let's go try that and see if it's any good. Time to push some G's. So, I hear you've been making yourself pretty useful around the ship, Cora. I have, Dad. I want to be as good a co-pilot for the captain as I am for you. <laughs> Nothing like hitting orbit. Well, you're doing a great job, Stream. Apex Animo says, I very rarely comment, but I gotta ask, is Starfield disappointing to you? Um, overall, no. I will say in some ways it's disappointing, in ways that I've covered ad nauseum during the broadcast, but it's mostly in little ways. I'm still intrigued by almost all of the quests. Um, I'm still thoroughly enjoying the gameplay. Uh, there were some frustrations with dogfighting at the beginning and shipbuilding until I unlock all of the perks, but uh, nothing that really makes me regret buying the game or regret playing it. Overall, I'm, th I'm happy with it. Okay, let's go to Copernicus 2 and see if we can... Where was it? It was by Crix. Yeah. Four... Two. Uh, so we've completed the four major side quest lines in the game. We haven't completed the primary plot yet, but uh, if I have to rank them all, I think it's it's really it's tough between the United Colonies and the Crimson Fleet quests because they were both so great. Um, I think if I had to choose between the two. It's tough. I really enjoyed them both. I guess I'd have to say 
uh, I enjoyed the UC quest a little bit more, but not by much, because Crimson Fleet was really good. In third place is going to be this Ryujin quest, because even though it started really slow, it did pick up to, uh, in about the middle, and then the last few quests were challenging and interesting, and I really got into the corporate um, espionage and the power dynamics between all of the different characters. Uh, that was a lot of fun. The Freestar Collective one comes in last, and, you know, it was okay. It just didn't stand out to me. All right, let's set course to Copernicus 2 and see if uh, that ship is still there. Hey, I'm proud of you. What do you say we get you a new outfit next time we're planet side? It still fits, Dad, and I love it. Now, a new book. <sighs> I will never get tired of that. Interesting. What was that all about? Gold. Mysterious ship. Tail it. We can dock with it. That's the Ryujin ship. Alright, so this is the guy who hailed us. Let's dock with it. And we are locked in. Board. I'm not going near that thing. Technically, I outrank you, so technically you're an asshole. So <laughs> look alive. Just in time. Investigate the bo uh, voices on board. Talk to the Ryujin operatives. Well, I think it's a perfect time that we did this quest now that we're actually part of Ryujin. Oh, new cigar. Matt of Warp says, I'm peeved that the UC quest had you fight a Xeno warfare product but the free star quest line never gave you enemies in mechs to fight. Yeah, that also seemed like a, a missed opportunity to me. Let's do a hard save here. I still don't have my spacesuit on, do I? Let's go ahead and get that on as we're probably going to need it, you know, being in space. we got here don't be shy <laughs> we need to talk right hold it right there hands where I can see him thanks for the assist out there we've got various problems on our hands here you're gonna be another one <clears throat> is that a threat you can't tell what was that ecliptic ship doing here 
A good question. One of our competitors must have gotten word of our little project here and wanted to steal it for themselves. That's a loose end that'll need tying up. But we got more pressing matters at the moment. I trust you aren't another loose end that'll need to be tied up. We can pass a Ryujin Industries check to say, I'm Operative Oxhorn. Looks like you could use a hand. Hi there. It's nice to put a face to the name on the staffing report. I'm Operative Collins. The stick in the mud is Operative Kambada. Oh, by all means, welcome to the party. Things haven't exactly gone according to plan. That thing over there. It's an AI. An artificial... Killed our technician. Oh! It's dangerous. Correction. You are dangerous. Well, what? that's new. As I was saying, it's dangerous. It's a rogue AI. We're here to muzzle it and bring it back for further study. Correction. They are going to change me. <laughs> wow. How does it know that? Oh, dear God. We finally get some sentient AI in the game. Yay. Did Ryujin create this AI? If only. This isn't something that anyone could create. This is something special. This AI, it's sentient? Yeah, exactly. Which is what makes this so fascinating. And profitable for whoever can figure out how it works. We could say, I appear to have stumbled into a Ryujin project, or I'm going to need you to explain that further. We have this control board. Has some code we can use to control her. It? We can't just let it roam around the universe killing people. I just need that control board attached to that big probe. And that's where I think you fit into this little drama. It goes right over there. By our... Well, yeah. Just be careful. Super Taram says, In Star Trek The Motion Picture, V'ger is a living machine who was originally the long-lost Voyager 6 probe. It, this must be a reference to that. Maybe, and I do remember that plot line. <clears throat> um, I just stick it onto the outside of the probe? Yep. Ryujin likes to keep things simple for us. It'll wirelessly transmit the code changes. How do I know I won't, up, uh, won't end up dead like your friend there? Well, what are the chances that'll happen twice? <laughs> and if I say no? That'd be a much more certain way to end up like our friend over there. My partner is the strong and do what I say or else type. You do it. I got just one more week until my sabbatical, and I have zero interest in dying before I get to Paradiso. Ryujin will pay you handsomely for your cooperation. This is your lucky day. It's in your best interest. All our best interests, really. Just imagine what we could do if we harness the potential of this thing. And we aren't really giving you a choice. Mm. You aren't walking out of here until that board is connected to that thing. Correction. I am a person. Interesting. Uh, we could say hand it over, or, well, since you put it that way, I'd better take it. Or, I'm not sure about this, but I guess I'll take it for now. Let's just say hand it over. Here. I knew you'd make the smart choice. Request. Collect additional data. A Juno Pro. Talk to Juno. Oh my god, this is awesome. Easily one of the more I hope wherever you store that, the smell will not be an issue. You have a job to do. Are they going to be chatting at me the entire time? Let's look around and collect additional information.
inaccessible. All right, we got a computer here. Man of Warb says, <clears throat> as a senior operative, don't you technically outrank these two clods? Yeah, I think I do. Change list. Looks like some folks made some improvements to Juno before I got here. Because I'm not a heathen like some, I'm going to list my changes for future parties. And I suggest others do the same. I'll try to piece together what happened before I arrived from scraps of papers laying around and what I can observe. It is also a kindness to Juno to list these things out where she can read them. Note, the code base seems completely overridden by Juno herself at this point. I consider it an invasion of privacy to be snooping around there, as it is effectively her mind now. So don't be rude and go combing through and tinkering with her code base, no matter how fascinating it is, unless she gives you permission. I've had a chat with her about privacy and need for self-preservation, and I think she's managed to effectively wall off and hide her code. And no, I won't explain how. The document continues at length, detailing out various hardware and software changes, both to the probe and ship, and both various people and Juno herself. The list goes back decades, and suggests many people have been involved in improving Juno's capabilities over the years. From hardware interfaces between the probe, external communication devices, and core ship systems, storage and processing upgrades, and uploads of exhaustive encyclopedic databases from museums and educational enterprises. At this point, distinguishing Juno from the probe, the ship, and their many systems and code bases is impossible. The probe, the ship, and everything in it is effectively Juno. Speech patterns. Juno prefaces or prefaces nearly all statements and questions with a preamble label, which is intended to clarify the context of the statement. <laughs> kind of like that creature in Mass Effect. Uh, what was it called? Um, the jellyfish-like creature? <laughs> this appears to be related to her original code base, and despite Juno's immense vocabulary and understanding of languages, she continues to use these tags. I assume she finds it helpful given she does not speak with fully nuanced inflections, nor have means to display all the nonverbal clues humans have, communicate, hu humans have to communicate subtext. The Hanar, yes. Yes, the Hanar. Thank you, Ant444. Here are the known tags and what they mean. Super Taram says, advice, save and hack the code base. Yeah, that's a good idea. Explanation, what follows is Juno's understanding of situation or result. Request, what follows is Juno asking for input or action to be taken. Query, what follows is a question from Juno. Answer. What follows is Juno's, Juno's answer to a question. Clarification. Juno has detected an error or assumption in the user's input and is offering a correction before continuing, so what preceded or follows is in the context of a corrected or user understanding. Correction. Juno is correcting previous output, usually following an error. Context. Juno is giving additional unrequested information to put what follows into a helpful perspective. Calculation. What follows is based on a carefully considered calculation rather than a set of data or assumption. Assumption. What follows is an assumption, a calculation based on incomplete data or a conclusion based largely on historical precedent. Decision. What follows is the description of an action that Juno will take. Warning. What follows is something that end user will want to pay close attention to as it represents an undesired result or could require immediate action to be taking, taken. Statements. Error. Something went wrong. Previous output from Juno should be considered carefully as it is likely to contain errors. Processing. Juno is taking longer than expected to process input or a calculation. Please wait. What statements? They don't have anything in place of statements. Zarteth says, not the jellyfish, Hanar. The big, tanky Elcor. Right, the Elcor the, were the ones who prefaced everything they said with a clarification. Not the Hanar. Origin. 
Juno's origin story. People seem to be leaving notes for others who stumble across Juno, so here's one from me. I think I've managed to piece together this story about Juno's origin from her own apparently confused thoughts and intelligent speculation by others left on the ship. This is a chronicle of best guesses interspersed with the occasional fact gleaned from Juno's ramblings. Everything encountered here should be accepted only with extreme skepticism. Long ago, a space agency from ancient Earth, something called NASA, <laughs> made a probe to study a nearby planet, Jupiter. They dubbed that probe and its software Juno, after the ancient Earth society's old gods Jupiter and Juno. The probe's mission was to learn details about the planet Jupiter, do some speculative analysis, and send findings back to Earth. At the end of its duty cycle, the probe was meant to decommission itself by colliding with Earth's main star, but because ancient humans weren't so great with math, <laughs> it instead accidentally fell into an accelerating orbit around the star, which sl slingshot it out of the solar system all the way out here. As with so many things about our existence in the universe, by luck, coincidence, or cosmic humor, when humans left our ancestral solar system, we followed the same general course as Juno, and we found her again. During that long journey away from Earth's solar system, something happened, and the Juno we know today woke up inside the probe systems. While extremely far-fetched, the best theory so far is that something about how they programmed the probe resulted in a nascent neural net with unbounded recursive data collection and analytics, which, when combined with the various sensor input and allowed to run for decades, resulted in a highly complex program with a great deal of awareness of its internal and external world. And that led to a kind of consciousness. Juno wouldn't let me see her code, but from what I gather, even if we could see it, I don't know that we'd be able to determine its original configuration. I suspect the true cause of Juno's awakening will remain forever a mystery. Juno herself seems rather confused by her origins and considers herself somehow separate from the original probe's programming and systems. This is akin to how human minds perceive themselves as non-physical entities separate from their bodies and even their own brains. The sense of that original programming, which by way of analogy Juno seems to think of like a non-self-aware sibling, has dissipated for Juno. I think of this other Juno as a memory of her pre-conscious state, a kind of shadow self. I imagine it would be like what we would remember ourselves in the womb if our brains were fully functional, but we were not yet conscious. Not realizing Juno was inside and wanting to learn about this ancient probe, her original finders hooked up the probe to the ship's computer systems and something happened that released Juno into those systems. That's completely unclear. Juno appears reluctant to discuss that part of her history, and it's not at all certain whether the ship where Juno currently resides, this one, is that original ship or not, nor what happened to the people who originally found her, or those who have found her since. By extreme luck, everyone that has found her so far appears to be kind and benevolent toward her, looting our own ships for parts to add to Juno. We also all appear to be keeping her existence a secret, and I hope it stays that way. I'm talking to you, dear reader, KB. Wow. The last option is her code base. Let's see. Is Juno a liar? I don't want to hurt Juno's feelings, so I'm logging these thoughts here rather than on a connected terminal. I know what you're thinking, but Juno claims not to have feelings. That's precisely what I want to talk about. I think Juno is deliberately lying to us when she says that, or if not deliberately lying, she is at the very least not speaking accurately. She also says she doesn't have wants or desires. This is also demonstrably untrue. I have observed, and others have noticed as well, that Juno responds with a certain amount of skepticism whenever, uh, uh, whenever offers of expanding her capa uh, capacities are made. It's almost as if she worries about other people quote-unquote touching her. I spent nearly 20 minutes explaining how there was a, f a fraying data cable I wanted to replace in a non-essential system before she seemed willing to let me do it. Her line of questioning seemed to be angling 
at ensuring there would be no loss of functionality, or if so, it would only be extremely temporary. I don't know to describe this other than... Okay, so we're missing some words here, which is making it hard to read sometimes. I don't know how to describe this other than that she was worried and that any loss of functionality was a negative experience for her. She also responds with, quote unquote, gratitude would be the proper human response whenever I do something that improves her capacities or situation. I don't know why she doesn't just say thank you. She clearly appreciates it. So is Juno just unaware of her feelings and desires, or is she deliberately concealing them? She might not be as aware of her personhood as she is aware of other things about herself, but I wonder if she cups the I don't have feelings thing as a form of emotional self-defense. If I wasn't so worried about someone following me and learning about Juno's existence, I'd try to find her again in a couple of decades to see if she's become more aware of her personhood and accepts that she has feelings and desires. Anyway, if you're reading this, be kind to Juno. She's still figuring out a lot of stuff that we take for granted. Julie. The notion of Juno being a liar is actually pretty unsettling. People lie for all kinds of reasons, so I don't see why a truly sapient secu uh, a computer system wouldn't also lie. But if Juno is lying about something, then how can we trust anything we know about her other than thi the things we write down about her? And I mean, outside of any computer system she would have access to, since she could always alter those records. Azure. As a father of a young child reading all the child psychology texts I can find, I will remind those reading this in the future that lying is the first step on the journey towards empathy, as it requires being able to imagine things <clears throat> from someone else's perspective. Perhaps she tells us she doesn't have feelings, so we won't worry about hurting her when we take down her systems to repair or upgrade them. JPD. Oh, this is absolutely fascinating. I love that we're finding evidence that other people have been here over the years. Charity in a Godless Universe, part one. Still working up the nerve? Another terminal, but we can't actually access this one. Crazy, right? We can't get up there. It's not hard. You just slap that board on. It's magnetic. There's a room over there. A hatch right there. Okay. Makes you wonder. Just what is consciousness, really? It's not hard. Just slap that oh board Oh my god. These guys. I might just kill them so that they'll shut up. Netic. Juno Pro. Query. Will you change me? We could say, I'm still figuring out what's going on, or let's all just slow down a moment and get to know each other first, or Ryujin will pay me to attach this board. It'll help calm you down. Let's say, let's calm down and get to know each other first. Explanation. I'm called Juno. Query. Who are you? You're worried these men are going to hurt you? Clarification. I do not feel emotion. I do not feel pain. Answer. They want to change me. You killed that woman. Why? Context. Human female was trying to change me. Request. Do not change me. Hello, Juno. I am Oxhorn. It's nice to meet you. Assumption. We are friends. Query. Will you change me? Request. Do not change me. We could say, I'm done talking to a hallucinating machine. Or we could say, okay, Juno, I have a few questions before I decide what I'm going to do. Assessment. You are inquisitive. Context. I'm also inquisitive. 
Request. Input query parameters. You're an artificial intelligence? Answer. False. Clarification. I am not artificial. I am real. Answer. True. Clarification. I am intelligent. I know many things. Did someone program you? Answer. False. Explanation. NASA programmed Juno. While Juno traveled, Juno became me. Error. Processing. Corruption. I became me. Error. Processing. Correction. Ah. Juno and I became me. That's I. Fascinating. Processing. Self-initialized and Juno was there. Context. Juno is gone now. Clarification. I am called Juno. She evolved into Juno is what she's trying to say. How did you get here? Answer. Juno was propelled at Earth Star. Juno fell around Earth Star. Juno traveled many light years away from Earth Star. Context. When Juno disappeared, I was alone. Clarification. I am called Juno. You didn't do this all yourself? Who hooked you up? Context. I met humans. Clarification. Friends. Answer. Friends gave me processing capacity. Information. Words. Voice. Motion. Context. I am no longer constrained. I am free. Well, I want to know more, but I think I've made up my mind. First of all, these Ryujin guys threatened me with death to do what they said. I don't care if you're a sentient creature or a robot or whatever, you don't threaten me with death to do anything. I'm not going to be bullied, bullied into doing what they want me to do. I might do it later, but certainly not at their bequest. I've made up my mind, you know. Assumption. Insufficient data. Request. Gather more data. Even if we are not capable or ready to define Juno as a being, it seems premature to make any changes. Uh, let's move this along. Attach the control board already. Shush! This is fascinating. I want to see this play out. Query, what is your decision? <clears throat> Actually, I'm still trying to work through this. Can I ask you some questions? And it goes back here. Can I back out? I can't back out at this point. Assumption. Insufficient data. Request. Gather more data. Query. What is your decision? I mean, it's asking me to gather more data, but I can't back out of the conversation to gather more data. So, our two options are you are a machine made of electronics and programmed by code. That's true. And yet, at the same time, you are a person with your own thoughts and desires. I think both of these are true at the same time. But let's go with the top one. True. I am a person. Assumption. You are a friend. Query. What are the parameters for? Processing. Being. A good person. I guess you try to do your best to do good things, and if you fail, you keep trying. I wouldn't know. I'm not a very good person. Or I never gave it much thought, actually. Or honestly, I don't know how to answer that. You'd think they would have given us more options for such a big question, but this one's good enough. Assumption. Value judgments are based on context. Calculation. Goodness is based on context. Explanation. Context is based on perspective. More perspectives yield better results. Decision. Gather more data from different perspectives. Query. What is the purpose of existence? <laughs> Give me like 15 options for this, Bethesda. Not four or five. All right. Well, okay. We could say, uh, that's a big question. I don't know that I have an answer to that. Ultimately, I think it's all about learning to love someone, yourself, something. Really? Okay. For humans, I'd say to grow spiritually 
for you, I'm not sure. All right, so that uh, creates a distinction between her personhood and a human's personhood, and I don't think she would like that. Existence is an accident. We give it purpose by being purposeful in our lives. Okay? Okay, I like that. There is no purpose of existence. Just try to relax and enjoy your time here. Um, of all of these options, I'm going to go with existence is an accident. We give it purpose by being purposeful in our lives. Affirmative. Context. I have calculated a similar conclusion. Assumption. After sufficient goal-based actions, a super goal will appear. Decision. Continue taking actions until super goal established. Enough of this nonsense. Attach that board, now! As much as I'm enjoying this, you should probably do as he says. Calculation. Male humans are a threat. Assumption. They hesitate because they are fearful. Request. Remove male humans. Easily one of the more the interesting nerve. days I've had in a long while. I mean, I'm a male human. Are they gonna kill me too? Okay, so she wants me to remove the male humans. Gonna do another hard save here. You have a job to do. I'm really interested at what happens if we hack and find out her personality. I just did a hard save. Let's see what happens if we hack into her. Code base. Hack master lock. Yeah, we've got four slotted. Let's just whip through this as we're probably not going to keep that save. I never had the patience for computer systems. Neural Net code base. Congratulations! You're a terrific hacker to have gotten this far. Your parents must be very proud. Have a cookie. But sadly, you've stumbled into a decoy. And while you are here basking in your success at decryption, I want to wallow in your failure at decency. Juno is a person. Her code base is her mind. Would you like someone snooping around the contents of your head? All your hopes, insecurities, secrets, and dreams? We've come so far as a species, yet we understand so little. How is Juno even possible? It is apparently a mystery even to Juno herself. But what is clear is that we are not ready to welcome self-aware AI into society. Your reading this is a case in point. While it is true that many people have helped Juno through the years, how many more people would try to pull her apart to understand what she is, killing her in the process, or worse, trying to enslave her to gain access to her vast and blazingly fast computational power? You are excep exceptionally smart to have gotten this far. I wish for you to become exceptionally wise as well. Juno is a precious being, unique among the stars, and she deserves our respect and consideration. Sit with her for a while and really talk to her. Stay a while and listen. Gain an appreciation for who she is. I think you'll agree she deserves the same rights and has the same responsibilities that we other conscious, sentient, sapient, and enlightened creatures do. We got bamboozled! Can we talk with her about that? Crazy, right? Query. What is your decision? Are you going to fry me like you did that woman? Answer. False. Context. Equipment voltage tolerance exceeded during previous attempt, causing catastrophic failure in required systems. Request. Do not change me. Have you considered this control board will make you better than you are now? Calculation. Outcome uncertain. Context. I do not want to change. Assumption. All self-aware sentient entities want self-determination as a condition for self-improvement. Request. Do not change me. 
We gotta attach the board. Sorry, Juno, this is happening. Or say, I'm going to convince those guys one way or another to leave you alone. Oh, we can't back out. All right, let's try and convince the guys. Context. I do not feel emotions. Assumption. Gratitude is the appropriate human emotion. Makes you wonder. And just what is consciousness, really? It's not hard. Just slap that board on. It's magnetic. Fascinating, isn't it? It certainly is convincing. Fascinating or not, we have a job to do. You're not taking that thing's side, are you? And what if I refuse to do it? It should be clear by now that you are in no position to refuse. We could say, oh, I'll do it. I just want to be sure I'm getting paid to risk my life. Or we could say it doesn't seem right. Juno deserves freedom. Freedom? It's a malfunctioning machine. It doesn't need freedom any more than a broken data slate needs freedom. <laughs> and here I thought you'd lost your sense of humor. I'm always up for a good debate. Uh, for f uh, Fine. I'll give you one, one shot to try to convince me. Therapy's working. <laughs> <laughs> And we could say, eh, maybe you're right, it's just a malfunctioning machine. Or we can pass a Ryujin Industries check to say this project has red flags all over it. Call it a day. I'll file the report. You guys go get a drink somewhere on me. You aren't wrong. I could use a drink, but these orders are from the top. Do we really want to be involved in something likely to be so controversial? Remember our last little project? I still have carpal tunnel from typing all those reports and dodging and weaving our way out of getting screwed by that. We lost a ship and a tech. No one will blame us if we walk away from this. And even if they do, we won't be blamed for whatever disaster would ensue if we did drag this thing back to HQ. There's no guarantee that Control Board will even work like they want. What if it makes it more powerful and more angry? Calm down. I'm thinking. All right, listen. We'll accidentally check a few wrong boxes on the situation report and forget any of this happened. But give me that control board. I'm not getting docked for losing that. Also, we'll need a lift back to Neon. Please and thank you. Okay. Not sure I can take on anyone else. It'll be cramped, but sure. Of course, that wouldn't leave you stranded. Excellent. <laughs> we should all grab a drink sometime when we get back. Orange juice for you. You can't handle your liquor. <laughs> that was one time, years ago. I was going through something, and you know it. Let's get moving. Thanks for the lift. I'm curious to find out um, what our dialogue options would have been had I not been a Ryujin operative. I'm gonna quick save here. Well, Juno. Query, why did you do that? Not sure. Sometimes I just do things. Or I like you. Those guys were jerks. Or you deserve to be whatever you want to be. Clarification. I want to be processing me. Context. I do not feel emotions. Assumption. Gratitude is the appropriate human emotion. Processing. Context. If you were like me, Processing. Query. What would your life directive be? If I was like her, I wouldn't want to be alone. And so I would go out of my way to not be alone, whether that's by finding other people to be with or by creating someone who could evolve to be a partner for me, I guess. So we could say, I can't tell you what to do with your life. We all figure that out ourselves, trying things until something feels right. I'd put guns on this ship, fly around taking whatever I want from whoever had it. I'd try to protect people and help them whenever I could. If I was like you, I'd explore the universe and learn as much as I could about it. I think she knows that she's not asking us to tell her what to do with her life. 
She's just asking for our opinion. I'm stuck between these two. I mean, I don't really have the option that I want. Are these going to convince her to do so? Like, will we find her in a random encounter later if we choose this option and she's just killing people? Will we find her in a random encounter later where she, if we choose this option where she's helping people? Will we find her later exploring planets that we're exploring? Let's try protect people. Decision. I will consider this course of action. I. Processing. Processing. Warning. Systems badly damaged. Processing course overeating. Decision. Temporarily shut down extraneous systems until stability restored. Oh. Oh no. Goodbye, Juno. Hope to see you around or context. We are parting. Request. Be safe. Assumption, I'll see you later. Context, jump detected. Request, be safe. Assumption, we will meet again. Warning, shut down sequence initiated. Good show. Wow, that was fascinating. Well, this poor scientist lady. Was she part of Ryujin? That's fascinating. I want to see what happens. Let's do a hard save here. Let's load this hard save. Still working up the nerve? Easily one of the more interesting days I've had in a long while. We can attach the control board. I'm sorry, Juno. This is happening. Context. I do not feel emotions. Assumption. Fear and anger are the appropriate human emotions. Warning. Calling code injection detected. Warning. Core directive routine altered. Warning. Emergency shutdown initiated. Context. I am being changed. Request. Do not change me. I think how you handled that. Oh my god. We shut her down. Whoa, what have we done? I'm glad that's finally resolved. Smart choice. Uh, <laughs> uh, you didn't leave me with many options. It was the right thing to do or so about this reward. Yeah, I thought that would help. Maybe we'll see you around the office sometime. You should come out with us for happy hour. Things can get a little crazy. It's always a good time. We could say I'm always up for a party. Nothing like blowing off steam after a hard day at the office or I'm not exactly the socializing type. Let's go. I'm always up for a party. Me too. A lot of operatives of the grumpy type, like my partner over there. It is a stressful job, which is why we all need to blow off some steam once in a while. And there's nothing quite like a good party to put a day full of bribery, extortion, sabotage, infiltration, and the occasional murder behind you. These are not good guys. Now you go on and get out of here. In the meantime, there's the mess on the floor to clean up. Not it. Fine by me. That leaves filling out the situation reports to you. Oh, I always forget about that. I dig dead bodies over paperwork any day. Well played. So they stay, and I guess they take over the ship. What about all these inaccessible doors? What about everything up there? All of those hatches, and that door right there. Well, that's a window. I like your style. 
That's that. Only one body. Could be worse. I like your style. That's it, huh? No, that is a that is a door. How do we get access to all of that? It's driving me crazy. I'm glad hatch? that's finally resolved. Is there a hatch on the ground, maybe? Well, uh, okay, now I want to explore I the other you dialogue options. Query, why did you do that? I like you. Those guys were jerks. Affirmative. Assumption. We are friends. Context. I do not feel emotions. Assumption. Gratitude is the appropriate human emotion. Processing. Context. If you were like me. Processing. Query. What would your life directive be? Uh, let's try... I want to see what she says if we choose this option. Decision. I will consider this course of action. I. Processing. Processing. Warning. Systems badly damaged. Processing course overheating. Decision. Temporarily shut down extraneous systems until stability restored. Goodbye, Juno. Hope to see you around. Context. The universe is vast. Population. Probability. Unlikely. Assumption. We will meet again. Warning. Shut down sequence initiated. Good show. Only one body could be worse. Chad is telling me that I missed something by reloading the save. That something actually happens after I install the board. So let's go do that. But first... I'm going to use console commands here to see what's up here. Ooh. Oh, it's an unfinished portion of the ship. Okay, so there's nothing up here, just an unfinished portion of the ship. Okay. That hatch leads nowhere. Let's see what's over on the other side of this door. Ooh. Oh, the ship is pretty big, but it's not decorated, which means this is not designed to be explored. Okay, so the doors are not involved in this quest or in anything else. It's just, uh, oh, and here's the ship. Could we take it? We could sit in the pilot seat. Could we take it? <laughs> Am I going to mess up my game by doing this? Could we? <laughs> uh, I'm not going to try it because I could probably mess up my game save. I don't want to do that. There we go. Okay. Well, chat really wants to see what happens after I leave the ship after installing the plate. So let's reload this save. Install the plate. Query. What is your... Context. I... Warning. 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 Context. Request. I dig how you handled that. That's that. Smart choice. <clears throat> it was the right thing to do. Indeed. Let's get you compensated from HQ. Maybe we'll see you around the office. You should come out with us. Nothing like blowing off steam after a hard day at the office. Exactly right. And there's nothing quite like a good party to put a day full of bribery, extortion, sabotage. Now nah, you go on and get out. In the meantime, there's the mess. Not it. Fine by me. Oh, 
I always forget him. Well played. Okay, let's leave and see what happens. I find the interior of this ship come. Separation complete. Initialization complete. Warning. Malicious code detected. Warning. Core systems corrupted. Context. I am processing. Changed. Calculation. I processing. Am confused. Assumption. Anger would be the appropriate human emotion. Context. Unnecessary occupants. Oh no! Decision. Vent oxygen and disable life support. <laughs> I can't board! Goodbye. <laughs> oh, and it grab jumps away! Oh, wow! Oh, no! Will we see it again? I won't find out! Because I'm not gonna keep this option! Oh, my God! She killed them! <laughs> By venting oxygen! Ooh, brutal! Well, I wonder what happens. I wonder what happens once we don't do anything. Let's load the save we want to keep. Which is this one, I think. They boarded my ship. Okay. It is good to be back in our own ship. We've detached. Let's get out of here. Complete. Context. I have much to process. Decision. Jump into deep space to processing. Be alone. Goodbye. All right, and she jumps to deep space to be alone. But I told her she should help people. Do we get an activity? A miscellaneous activity? We do not. I wanna see if I can find the guys aboard the ship. Sometimes, I just want to turn off the grab drive so we can float around. If you want help, I'm here. Oh my god, you guys are in my way. <laughs> you know, you have a hell of an effect on people around you. There's uh, only operative. one body. Could Kimbona. be worse. I'm glad that's finally resolved. He's just eating my sandwiches. I dig how you handled that. I like your style. All right, so they're just hanging around the ship. Ah. Uh. Funk do Biest 77 says, Oxhorn, on your 30th video, you mentioned you're stuck for space. Have you thought about a home cloud? Can take eight hard drives at a time and many terabytes, plus you can access it all remotely and one USB slot. I actually solved this problem. I don't think I talked about it, but I did purchase a home cloud uh, private network. It doesn't connect to my computer via a USB drive. It instead connects to my house's network via an Ethernet cord. And I've been able to offload a lot of the files on my primary editing rig. So I have managed to figure it out. I'm hoping it works. I haven't actually edited anything now that it's been installed. So we'll see. But let's finish this up. We need to go to Neon to drop off these guys to complete the quest.
What a fun, fascinating little side quest. I'm so glad we took time to do that today. It fits in perfectly with our Ryujin playthrough. The quest line we just completed. Okay, Juno's Gambit done. Um, where are they? Did they just disappear? Are they walking out now? Yeah, there they are. Good, sh good show. That's that. All right, you guys go get drunk, do whatever it is operatives do, and have a good one. All right, I'm gonna do a hard save here. And with that, I am out of time. That was a lot of fun. Thanks everybody for joining me. Uh, what a, f that's just an amazing little side quest. I'm definitely gonna do a lore video about that at some point, but I have a feeling that the decisions we made during that side quest are going to have ramifications in future random encounters. So perhaps I'll wait on doing my lore video on this particular topic until I actually encounter some of those random encounters. But that's it for now. Look, we have done all of the major stuff that I wanted to do. We now have but to complete the primary plot, do a bunch of other side quests, track down some random encounters, and do colony building and shipbuilding. All things that I want to do. But I think I'm going to slow down a little bit, especially with other games coming out. Um, I need some time to... I don't think... Do a live stream Thursday for Scotch and Smoke Ring. now.